We have amongst us a surgeon par excellence and a passionate academician, Professor Dr. Satish Jain, ENT, head and neck cancer and skull based surgeon, Jain ENT Hospital, Jaipur, an eminent scholar with an illustrious career spanning over two decades. Dr. Satish has done pioneering work in the development of endoscopic and microscopic skull based surgery, initiated cochlear implant program in Rajasthan, and has several other merits to his credit. Parading the achievements of this renowned academician is, of course, a biographer's delight. With all cordiality and respect, we welcome Dr. Satish Jain for his session on live surgery, basics to advanced. With that, I request you to give your undivided attention to Dr. Satish Jain. We welcome you, sir. The first surgery will be chaired by Dr. Sajid, AOI State Secretary and Senior ENT Surgeon Manjeri, and Dr. Sadurdi Ahmed, Head of the Department, Kote Medical College. Thank you. Hello. Hello. Yes, sir. Hello. Yes, sir, we can hear you, sir. Hello, am I audible? We can see you, sir. We can hear you. Thank you. Good yes, morning, sir, all. You. And first of all, I extend my thanks and gratitude to the organizing team for giving me this opportunity once again to share my thoughts and, uh, you know, learn more from this uh, very high-end conference from the Kerala state. And as we all know, we know this dictum, well begun is half done. And that is what we see this morning with a fantastic informative lecture from a video lecture from our friend, dear friend Manoj. It was really mind blowing to see the fine details, fine crux of cochlear implant surgery, who himself is a master in this field. And we learned a lot from that. Thank you so much, Manoj. And once Good again, morning, uh, Sajish Ji. Uh, I am Shahjid and uh, Dr. Sadaruddin is chairing the session. Hi, 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 boss. Both. Thank you, Dr. Sajid. Thank you, thank you. Uh, we welcome you to this Kencon. Uh, we love to be here in physical presentation, but I know that uh, you have to travel to Hyderabad and also uh, it is very difficult to arrange all these, these here. But uh, you have got a fantastic setup, we know there. Uh, we can telecast anywhere from there. Thank you for uh, inviting our, uh, I mean, uh, coming to, uh, to KenCon. Thank you very much. Over to you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Sajid, um, once again for giving me this opportunity. And I welcome here uh, Dr. Sharif, who is from um, Kerala State to be here in our theater today with us as a member of Kerala State ENT Association. Really um, um, nice to see him here in the theater. So as I said, well begun is half done and thanks to Manoj for this mind blowing lecture. Today's session, uh, we have, uh, you know, uh, cases lined up as the organizing team, you know, spoke to me and I am indeed, you know, so glad to meet those people wanting to deliver maximum possible to the delegates. So this, they discussed a couple of time to bring out variety of cases to have to incite more and more discussion. So we are beginning our day with the basics, with the case of nasal polyposis and plan is a full house sinus surgery. So I'll take you first to the CT scan, which I call as a Google map for the, uh, you know, uh, paranasal sinus anatomy. And that will definitely help us to, you know, carry out the sinus surgery with utmost safety and preventing complications. After that, we'll have otology case, like we have a small acoustic neuroma. I didn't keep the large one. We had three cases of acoustic today. So the small one I've kept for demonstration. Then we'll have some other cases like inverted papilloma, especially frontal sinus inverted papilloma involving the orbit, some tympanoplasty, rhinos revision, rhinos paradosis, and some more revision fests and other cases. So let's see how much we can um, go till four o'clock. So to begin with, uh, are you getting any um, uh, imaging picture? Yeah, yeah, we can. So 
this is the basic you know um, ct scan of the patient one thing i always mention and i will reiterate again here to order a ct scan in a digital format order a ct scan some millimetric sections a paranasal sinus ct scan we all require is a uh, you know non enhancing ct scan because we are you know looking for the uh, getting this for the inflammatory disease of the paranasal sinuses where we don't need a contrast enhancement so what we need to order is a fine some millimetric section like this you can see in the corner here it is 0.6 mm sections in axial plane it is always shot in axial planes and then you can reformat reconstruct in your own software this is dicom you can download from google and you get three dimensional imaging that to dynamic to get maximum details of this paranasal sinus you know uh, labyrinth you can say this area is very very important let me show you why this is important why we are so concerned about see paranasal sinuses are all around surrounded by orbit and skull base all the way orbit and skull base are in close proximity you know the threshold of threshold of safety for this surgery is very low if you are not oriented all the time there are so many structures running in close proximity to the you know limits of the paranasal sinuses like carotid artery optic nerve cavernous sinus lot many cranial nerves and so many things you have to be ultra ultra oriented to prevent complications and the only thing which helps you is a three dimensional ct scan unfortunately many a time patient come to us with a print out of a scan that to a coronal scan only majority of the times and why it happens the reason is very simple it all depends upon the surgeon how he orders the ct scan you write a ct scan pns that's it what will radiologist do radiologist will do 5 mm section in less than 10 seconds with with 10 or 20 slices in a print out to give you that this is your ct pns now how much informative it is you know very well so what kind of ct scan should be see this is point 0.6 mm section every time i move i move with 0.6 mm if i reconstruct to a coronal one see this this is 0.4 mm in reconstruction now now every time i move i move with 0.4 mm see this every time 0.4 mm so i don't miss any some millimeter can admit that is the basic region now imagine in the area of the paranasal sinuses in one section you like in this you have seen 116 slices 116 axial coronal sagittal around uh, 350 or something then in a uh, bone window and soft tissue window differently will be double and it is so impossible for a patient to carry on print out and equally impossible for the surgeon to look at all those slices and that too you know is not up to the mark so what kind of ct scan we need is a dynamic one dynamic one you can run and you can see each and every anatomy you know so dynamic like for example let me show you why it is important see i am coming from anterior to posterior coronal section what i see here is the frontal sinus then two cavities looks like intersinus septum deviated to one side some opacity here now as we go behind we see another intersinus septal now see if you get in this print out this is intersinus septal cell we don't know which sinus this is opening into we need to know so that we can widen to see the intersinus sinus cell or we can communicate inter in surgical uh, session see this this intersinus septal cell is communicating to the right sinus see how easy it is for the dynamic ct to understand and give information to you so number one is dynamic ct number two is three dimensional three dimensional dynamic ct is the only reason we give, give go for ct scan like this for example see this any structure in coronal plane coronal plane we know we easily understand in coronal plane because in the same plane we operate as well so it is easier to relate the anatomy in coronal plane now there are certain anatomy which is best you know depicted or more details are given in the axial plane some anatomy the best details are depicted in you know uh, sagittal plane like frontal sinus frontal sinus is best seen in sagittal plane now see this is intersinus septal cell 
how it is related to the frontal sinus, how it is look like on the axial sagittal section. See this. This is your intersinus septal cell on coronal. Take your cursor there and see where is the intersinus septal cell and how it, it can interfere with the drainage pathway of the frontal sinus. So all you can see when you relate three-dimensionally. The point is, why I'm trying to say is, this should something we can make a habit or a practice to order a CT scan in uh, you know digital format and then see dynamically so that you don't miss any single fine some millimetric anatomy which is important to prevent complication to important to you know carry out a complete surgical procedure otherwise not knowing the fact this fact is always makes you know um, uh, in uh, trouble or makes you in in doubt whether you are close to some critical structure or not or either you are like uh, likely to do an incomplete job or you'll end up with some complications so we have to be very, very, to, to stay very close to the perfection. We need to have a complete information of CT scan in a dynamic for, uh, format. Do you agree with me? Yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, like coronal section, I'm not going in details of the CT scan right now as the case is ready. But yes, I'll touch upon some important issues which we need to see on CT scan and some positive findings in this particular patient. Coming from the most anterior to the posterior. See, the first thing, the bony septum, the higher bony septum is little deviated to the left side. And you'll see in the rest of the, you know, see, the right nasal cavity is more roomy as compared to the left. And this high deviation is something need to be corrected. Why I why I am showing on CT scan this high deviation? Because this is the time that you can have this thing in your mind and you can counsel your patient that will require an additional septoplasty as well. What happens sometimes intraoperatively, you decongest the node and you feel like there's hardly any room, uh, hardly any problem in carrying out the sinus surgery, even on this left side after decongestion. And you can go ahead. Now going, passing your instrument through the narrow passages can actually cause trauma on both sides and can lead to sinic electron, which is something counterproductive for the sinus surgery, as entire sinus surgery success depends upon the ability to introduce post-operatively the topical irrigations. So, in this, from the first picture, you can make up your mind and tell your patient then you know advance that you'll need a septoplasty as well and i can show you if you want how your limited septoplasty can you know open up the space on the left side so this is first thing you need to see the nasal septum then coming from entry to posterior the first thing what you come across is this pneumatization in the frontal bone there are two spaces with an unequal uh, you know size of the frontal sinuses this is intersinus septum which is rarely in the midline and these are frontal sinuses. Why I'm saying frontal sinuses? This is two anterior anatomy. Two anterior are frontal sinuses. And why? Because there is floor intact and this floor is formed by beak. Let me take you what I'm saying to the three-dimensional. See this, where I am. This is frontal sinus and this floor is formed by beak. Can you see this? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hello? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So beak is why I'm um, emphasizing on it. This beak is going to be our, our sim, single most landmark to find the frontal sinus, to enter into the frontal sinus in the safest way. That is what I will corroborate intraoperatively as well. See, when you come with your endoscope from here, come your, with your endoscope from here with a 70 degree suppose, the first thing you come across is the beak. And as you go behind the beak, see, as the beak ends, as you go behind the beak, what is this? The frontal drainage pathway. Can you see? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The frontal outflow flow, the single most important anatomy you can, you know, consider in your practice as the most reliable landmark is the beak. That is what I'm going to show you in any of the most difficult frontal sinus situation. The beak is almost always there. In any number of revision surgery done, beak is hardly disturbed. So it is always there as a landmark. And this is a God's given landmark, which is never going to change. You follow the beak, follow the beak, follow the beak, where the beak ends has to be the frontal drainage pathway, nothing else. 
So this is what I'm going to corroborate. Now see in the coronal section what I was seeing. As, as long as the beak is there, see this, as long as the beak is there, the above, above pneumatization is the frontal sinus. See the beak is still intact. That is intersinus septal cell. Beak is still intact. Now the beak has gone. And see what is this? This is frontal drainage pathway. Can you see very clear? Yes, now, sir. now the frontal is gone. See this. Until now it was frontal sinus. See now it is until this was frontal sinus. Now the floor has gone. The beak has gone. Until now, you don't see the maxillary sinuses in view. So simple. And now as you go behind, as the frontal recess appears, frontal recess appears, the frontal drainage pathway appears, see the cribriform plate coming into picture. That is the ethmoidal roof. That is called the anterior ethmoidal roof. The anterior part of the ethmoidal roof, immediately behind the frontal sinus. And see at this level, the maxillary sinus starts appearing. So now we have gone posterior to the frontal sinus to the level that we should be able to see the maxillary sinus as well. Sometimes at this point, you see a lot of pneumatization going above the orbit behind the frontal sinus when the maxillary sinus is in view and that kind of pneumatization going above the orbit is a supraorbital cell, not the frontal sinus proper as you see the cribriform plate in view. That is most important. Let me bring... Uh, the coronal section again, see this. That was the frontal sinus. At the frontal gone, frontal gone, now the cribriform appearing. See the cribriform plate? Very yes, clear? Sir. Yes, yes, sir. Very clear. Very clear. See the cribriform plate forming the anterior part of the ethmoidal roof. It has two lamella, the horizontal and lateral. And see the entire anterior ethmoidal cavities completely opacified bilaterally. With no distinction of cells and landmarks, it is completely opacified bilaterally. And the structure, the most important structure which I am trying to show here is the middle turbinate, middle turbinate on either side, which is attached to the junction of lateral and medial lamella of the cribriform plate. Very clearly. Can you see this? Yes, or sir. Yes. Do I show in other uh, view? See now much better. See, the another beauty of this dynamicity is you can change the window setting to see the bony and soft tissue things prominent differently. Now see, this is the bone, that is the cribriform player, that is the middle turbinate, which is attached on either side at the level of uh, horizontal and lateral lamella. This is how. So that is anterior ethmoidal roof. Now again, I am going back to the frontal. This frontal, frontal ended, the anterior, I am going behind. The anterior roof appeared, roof appeared, roof appeared. I am going behind in the anterior now. Far behind in the anterior now. And at this point, can you see some beaking of the orbit? Yes, sir. Yes. On either side, this is the middle, uh, middle rector. This is superior oblique and the confluence of these muscles. You see this beaking of the orbit. And that is where the anterior artery leaves the orbit to enter this lateral lamella, which is considered to be the thinnest part of the skull base. So, so what I'm trying to say, I'm going back again to show you so that you don't, uh, you know, frighten yourself all the time with the entry ethmoidal artery. See, I'm going back to the, where the level of the ethmoidal artery, where the entry ethmoidal roof is ending now to become the post ethmoidal roof. Now I'm coming back, coming back. See this frontal sinus? See this frontal sinus? Now going behind, behind, the frontal sinus ended, anterior ethmoidal roof started, see the cribriform, behind, 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 so far no anterior ethmoidal artery. So try to understand the anterior ethmoidal artery, see coming behind, behind, see where the anterior ethmoidal artery comes, where the anterior ethmoidal roof ends. Do you notice this thing? And now, as you cross the level of the artery, the flat posterior ethmoidal roof starts. Can you see? Yes, sir, yes. So let me take this to the three dimensional and show you how far behind this entry model artery enters into the skull base from the frontal sinus relationship. So that when you do the frontal sinus work, you are not always, you know, terrified with the entry model artery. See, let me pick up the entry model artery on uh, this coronal view here. See, that's the level of the entry model artery. Can you see? And now yes, see this level in the sagittal. 
see if i draw a line here if i draw a line here this is the anterior border of the frontal sinus here see this can you see yes sir yes sir yes this is the frontal beak see the level of the frontal beak can you see here yes sir and see how much behind the anterior arteries when you are working with the 70 degree from here along the beak along the beak towards the frontal sinus then you work along the ethmoidal roof there and see the arteries far behind this red line see so once you are working in this trajectory towards the frontal sinus basically your artery is miles away behind in a different trajectory i hope you got my point what try point what i'm trying to say yes, so sir. when you are working for the frontal sinus with a 70 degree your artery is far behind it is uh, from here yeah i can say from here it is almost three more than more than one and a half centimeter behind from the beak can you see this yes sir yes so don't get terrified all the time while you're walking along the beak for the frontal sinus that your anterior artery going to be anywhere close this is far away miles away i can say in my terms away and in a different direction running along the skull bed that is something you can extrapolate from your um, you know ct imaging very clearly is that clear yes sir yes now uh, importantly before uh, we go fast this is as, see this was the anterior thymoidal artery roof as you go behind immediately the posterior thymoidal uh, roof starts so the anterior thymoidal artery runs in the posterior most part of the anterior thymoidal roof where the posterior thymoidal roof starts then the posterior thymoid is a you know is like a box bounded above by the skull base medially by the superior turbinate here laterally by the uh, medial wall of the orbit lamina papyracea and then you go behind then you go behind see these are larger cells you can see the cell walls but all white out larger cells larger cell as you go behind as you go behind larger cell now see the roof is formed by the frontal bone entire ethmoidal roof is formed by the frontal bone keep an eye the front on the frontal bone from terrier to terrier on this frontal bone as you go behind now the frontal bone is leaving and this lesser wing of the sphenoid has come and when lesser wing comes it is the sphenoid sinus behind so this transition from the posterior ethmoid to sphenoid is very important to know uh, during surgery as well as the, in the posterior lateral wall of the sphenoid we have tigers running the optic now carotid artery and we should know where exactly the sphenoid had started so as to orient ourselves not to damage the structure blindly so in, in during surgery at this point i will show you when the transition from posterior to my to sphenoid starts see this rostrum and here comes the opening of the sphenoid sinus so the moment uh, you know the sphenoid sinus comes that is your limit that the sphenoid sinus is coming into the picture behind and then staying anterior to the sphenoid sinus you can complete your posterior model work without any you know uh, 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 being terrified with the carotid artery or optic now behind because all those structures are going to be always always behind the level of the natural ostium of the sphenoid in any given abnormal anatomy the optic and carotid artery cannot come anterior to the sphenoid ostium it has never 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 been reported so far and it cannot come simple so the sphenoid sinuses you know the multiple septation incomplete septation this is the real septation that is incomplete septation see the multiple as you go behind incomplete you know like um, frontal sinus you know scallopings and then um, you, these are the pterygoid process so and the plates so in this what ct scan what we have found what we need to notice is some point, some important relationship with the skull base the kind of cribriform plate the kind of skull base the kind of orbit any day sense anterior model artery all these things to be kept in mind to prevent complications so this was a quick review of the ct scan and the case is ready in a couple of minutes we are starting before time before is the time for any questions or any suggestions Yes, sir. It's a lucid presentation of yes, sir. Just a lucid presentation of the radiology of the nose and perinasal sinus.
and uh, the importance of getting a digital images, especially a 0.6 mm cut with the uh, reconstructed images. See, the beauty of digital cuts is you can share with your friends. You can tag on any particular anatomy and share them. You can, on your team viewer, run together from a distant site. Like my friend is in Singapore and he's in theater. He can share his CT scan lively. I can see on my computer his CT scan through team viewer and so many things. So this is something, and this is a something data which you can store for future for your know, presentation, for future reference, or future follow-up, or so many things. Because printouts is something nowhere, you know, a substitute to this digital format. Delegates, uh, any questions? We have there a couple of minutes you can before ask. I wash up. Yeah, you can scrub and uh, start the surgery, please. Okay. We are eagerly waiting for your master. Sherif, are you there? Any questions by the delegates? Yes, you want to? There yes, are mics from the auditorium. You all can approach the mic and. Yeah, yes, sir. I'm here. Sh Sharif, uh, case is induced and uh, yeah, draped, right? This sir is about to wash up for the case. Okay. Okay, sir. Thank you. Any doubts regarding uh, any uh, queries to Dr. Satish Jain? Please come up. There are mics put up in the stage. Audio visual people, you can shift to theater, I believe. Yes. You can come. You can. You're part of the team today. Dr. Sharif. Yes, sir. Sharif. Hello. Hello. Yeah. Uh, can you give we are picture? getting a uh, CT image right now. Can you give the details of the patient? What do you want? Details, details of the patient or the symptoms and... Uh, yeah, the patient had... Uh, history, yeah. Yes, yes. Patient had history of nasal obstruction, recurrent discharge, and stuffiness in the nose. Had been treated several times at several places with antibiotic steroids. And on examination, was a cavity full of polyps. Then um, we counseled him for surgery. His, you know, before surgery, he was given a course of steroids for almost 12 days from now. Can you, can you? Uh, yes, we are getting that uh, image. Endoscopic picture? Endoscopic picture, yes. So for the Kerala people, Dr. Sharif is a part of our team today. Yeah. With us in the theater, Dr. Sharif. Once yes. again, you're welcome. It's an honor, sir. To be with you in the theater. So I hope the picture is good. Very good. So this is the picture after preparation for almost 12 days, you know. 
Okay, now, steroid what, and antibiotic. What kind of preparation is required? See, what what I kept uh, before the surgery was the marrow cell pieces soaked in saline and adrenaline. See this? Yeah. Two 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 marrow cells cut in almost eight to ten pieces of different sizes soaked in. This was one is to two combination uh, in this patient. The it depends upon the patients, you know. Uh, age and uh, you know physical status we choose this concentration in elderly patient we dilute more to prevent any further cardiovascular you know sensitivity but this topical is pretty safe overall we have sir, never injected for so many years now sir what proportion is saline and nail the not yes, using for yes. okay okay pardon what proportion of saline and adrenaline and so not using four uh, percent lignocaine? Not not four percent because the patient is being operated under general anesthesia. Yes, no four percent. It's pure saline and adrenaline. In this particular patient, we have used one is to two combination. Younger patient, you can use even even a pure one is to one thousand. Elderly, uh, one is to four or whatever, but never inject. The reason being. This is a benign disease in elderly patient, particularly cardiovascular labile patient. We can't afford this adrenaline when we inject to go in the disseminate in the systemic circulation and give cardiac complications. Those have been happened and reported in the literature, and we can't afford to take such a chance in this era now. So better use the topical, give at least 10 to 15 minutes. For the topicals to apply, and this is to apply. See what I'm doing. I'm not pressing anywhere. We have to apply this adrenaline on the mucosal surface, and the first application itself decongests the mucosa. The first application itself decongests to prevent further absorption of adrenaline through the mucosa. So it makes it pretty, very, very safe, you know. So if you do in local anesthesia, we will use it this four percent because we used to do cases under local anesthesia also. Yeah, local anesthesia. There are so many issues. Number one, the patient comfort because many a times and uh, this surgery we use most of the time micro debrider, your powered instrument. Then sometimes you may need a drill, sometimes coagulator, and see your airway uh, safety is always a concern. The patient, you know is always frightened and then there are so many issues so it is better now to operate under general anesthesia nowadays general anesthesia is becoming more and more safe so we always operate all nasal cases under general anesthesia for the safety reasons safety concerns number one so in preparation the pre-operative why this preparation is required to make your surgical field better why because this is inflammatory disease and the resultant inflammation in the nose and paranasal sinus mucosa, resulting in vasodilatation, resulting in more bleeding, more oozing, and making the identification of the landmark difficult. What we discussed at the outset, this is the surgery which has low safety threshold. Identification of the landmarks is so crucial to progress during surgery and to prevent complication. If you Keep operating in a bloody field, identification of the landmarks making more and more difficult, and you can ultimately land up in complications. So the most important thing in preventing complication is the surgical field. And see what I'm doing? The same marrow cell pieces, soak in saline, adrenaline, you know, apply everywhere, remove, rinse in saline, and use in the um, dip in same solution and reuse during the entire surgery and at the end of the surgery, we'll pack the cavity, the ethmoidal cavity with the same pieces soaked in, you know, uh, the steroid. So this is how uh, we carry out and see, this is the most important intraoperative preparation from surgeon side, this topical application, never ever press anywhere. See, if you press anywhere, it is going to be counterproductive in terms of giving venous congestion. So prevent, you know, uh, such practices of pressing hard to open up the space to get more better field. This is never something going to happen. So use a gentle application onto the surface of this adrenaline to decongest more and more. Number one. The second part of the preparation, we are all dependent on our anesthesiologist and tell you, see, 
let me tell you the parameters. See this? Can you see the pulse rate 54? Yes, sir. Yes. BP is more than, uh, you know, it is measuring. Uh, it's normal tensive and now 100, 120, whatever. So the pulse rate is the most important criteria, you know, for the surgical field. What, why I'm saying so? Because this surgery, what we face bleeding is the capillary bleeding. It is not arterial bleeding. It is not arterial bleeding. And in order to reduce the capillary oozing, the best parameter to keep under control is the cardiac output. And in order to reduce the cardiac output, the best parameter is to reduce the heart rate, to reduce the overall cardiac output. And we are, I am so indebted to our anesthesia team and our chief anesthesiologist, Dr. Anupam, who has been with me for uh, more than 15 years from now uh, together. And, and, and you know, I, I consider him something, uh, you know, a master in this field um, for this uh, particular anesthesia. See the field now? Yes, sir. All the picture? Yes, it's very good. Picture is clear. So Sorry, is it given for this uh, to reduce the heart rate by like uh, metoprolol by the anesthetist? Yeah. They, they use a lot of pre-operative and intra-operative preparation. So I never fall into that is their, uh, you know, uh, yeah, something uh, prerogative. And um, since we are working as a team, so he's taking care of this part of the, you know, uh, work. So now what I'm doing, see this? I'm just removing the polyps, the luminal polyps. See this? Yes, sir. Yes. These are polyps in the lumen to make the anatomy more understandable and prominent. Can you see this? Yes, sir. Yes. Very clear. Because multiple polyps, because this is what you, this, what picture you are seeing is after preparation for uh, so many days, you know. And I can see certain landmarks in picture now. Let me show you. Give me. After every step, make it a habit to apply the Marosin. same merosin. See this? Yes, sir. Yes. in saline adrenaline, apply for a few seconds. Another important thing is don't keep it pressed for long. See, don't forget our goal is topical application. Whatever it applies in 5-10 seconds is going to apply the same thing in 1 minute, 5 minutes, whatever time you keep in nose. So, there is no point in keeping it for long. There's few seconds and the job is done. Wash. See this? So, what the structures, can you see something, structure coming in your picture? There are, yeah. see, our area of interest is the lateral nasal wall. Yeah. And what we see here, the prominence and depressions in the lateral nasal wall from beginning, this is inferior turbinate. See this first prominence there. Can you see this? Yes, sir, yes. This belongs to the nasolacrimal system. Yes. Maxillary. The second prominence, can you see this? The Anchilic. only mobile structure in the lateral nasal wall. Mm. This is unsinate process. Yeah. This unsinate is very often distorted when you find a lot of, you know, massive polyposis. So you, the best way to identify is relating from the nasolacrimal duct because it remains unchanged. Behind that, it should be the unsinate. And that too confirmed by being a mobile structure. See this? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So that's the unsinate process. The third um, thing behind that, let me remove. The third structure behind that, what you see, where the polyps are attached. So this is bulla ethmodalis. Can you see this? Yes, sir. Yes. That is the cell of the bulla. And in between them is the hyter seminary superior inferioris. And if I go in the depth of the hiatus, it opens laterally into a three-dimensional space. Can you see this three-dimensional space? 
Yes, sir. This yes. is infundibulum, and in the infundibulum laterally, what opens is the natural loss of the maxillary sinus. Chota. So that is what the, the anatomy in the middle meatus at this point of time after removal of these polyps. I hope it is very clear to everybody. Yes, sir. Yes. In this sinus surgery, this particular patient, our goal is multi prong. Multi prong means. It is not a surgery which is going to uh, surgery only which is going to cure the patient. It will facilitate the cure or the further treatment. Because this is, we all know nowadays proven to be an inflammatory disease, and steroid is the only thing which works at the entire inflammatory cascade. So now this surgery will be having multi-pronged aims. Number one. To reduce this inflammation, these polyps, whatever is one of inflammation, to reduce this inflammatory load, which has not been taken so far by the medical management, the core of the medical management is the topical steroids, which couldn't tackle this and the disease persisted. You can't give oral steroids for long. You give oral steroid, patient improves, you withdraw it again, the symptoms reappear. So the inflammatory load is too much to be tackled by the topical steroid. That's why the surgery as a role, and the goal of the surgery is to reduce the inflammatory load, number one. Number two, to open up the sinuses to establish their ventilation and drainage for their health, which the surgery will, you know, do. And the third thing surgery will do, the most important nowadays, will give avenue for the topical steroids to penetrate deep into the sinuses. Now, see, my first step of the surgery is infundibulotomy. See, my Yes, sir. See my reverse biting going into the infundibulum, turn it yes. little down. See, this is a very important step. If I turn it little down, it goes away from the nasolacrimal system. This nasolacrimal system is coming anteriorly like here. So if you turn it down, it automatically keeps you more and more away and bite through it. See this? Enlarge, yes, advance it. Advance it until you come across the hard bone. Yes. When you come across the hard bone, that is the bone referred to as a nasolacrimal duct. Now see at this point, what we have opened is infundibulum. Can you see? Yes, sir. Yes. Sir. This uncinate has two parts. See now the natural ostium. Natural ostium here. This uncinate has the upper part. I will show you where it goes. And this lower part horizontally going to a variable distance line. So what I'm now doing is, see this? This is the lower part of the uncinate. You can remove it by means of a through biting. You can remove it by means of a micro divider. You can remove by a scissors, whatever. So here, I am completing my middle meter entrostomy. See this? Yes, sir. Yes. And we have seen on uh, CT scan there is hardly any you know extensive disease in the maxillary sinus. This mucosal, you know, edema is simply because of the blockage of the sinuses due to polyps being in the middle meatus. Sir, for ancinectomy, do you routinely use this ostrom backbiting forceps or either disturbance like sickle knife or other blood yes. disturbance? Yes. So, you know what happened? When initially this surgery was started with the Stamberger message ginger, they would use the sickle knife. We can use the sickle knife, but you have to be extra careful. Let me tell you why. There's a valid point you have raised here. Now, see, this is the widening of the middle meter. See, I don't see any extensive disease in the middle, you know, in the maxillary sinus, so I'm not widening it to any more. Yes, otherwise you can widen it. I If I Widen it till the posterior wall, it will be grade two, kind of a middle meter lantrosomy, or I can widen it any further to, to the floor, grade three or four, a sort of medial maxillectomy, depending upon the requirement of such. So, you're coming to your question regarding the use of sickle knife. See, this is uncinate. You can use your sickle knife right to the attachment of the uncinate and take it in toto. See this? Yes, sir. Yes. The concern. The concern number one is this. I will show that now. 
why we have stopped that? The concern, my biggest concern is this upper part of the ancillate is in close proximity to the orbital wall, that is lamina papyracea. The closest structure out of all lateral wall structure to the lamina papyracea is what? This. Yes. This ancillate process. And this will use as a landmark. We'll take the advantage of it using as a landmark when you remove the upper part. I will show you that why this upper part of the ancillate is so important. Hmm. Section, wash, wash. Hello. Yes, sir. So this is middle metal antrostomy. Yes, sir. I hope it is very clear. Yes, sir. Yes. And what I am trying to say, this upper part of the ancillate, we will use as one of the major landmarks to identify immediately the lateral wall of the entire sinonasal corridor, that is lamina papyracea. The moment I remove the upper part of the ancinate, you will be right on the lateral limit of your entire sinonasal corridor, that is lamina papyracea. Let me show you. Let me show it very clear and that can be used as one of the best landmarks. In the beginning, you get something as a landmark to show your limits. The moment you follow that, you will never give an orbital complication, as simple as that. See this, this lateral upper part of the ancillate. Now there are many ways to remove this upper part of the ancillate. I can go behind with my, you know, see this? Yes, sir. Uh, with my curate and fracture it gently, see this? Or I can take away with my shaver. See this, because it has a thin bony plate, nothing else. See this? Yes, sir. Yes. What I'm looking at, the moment I remove the ancinate, I will show you, I will be right on the lateral limit of my sinonasal corridor. See this lateral limit of sinonasal corridor? Yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. This is lamina papyracea. Can you see? Yes, sir. Yes. This is lamina. That is the concern for my sickle knife use. Suppose you use a sickle knife and make an orbital entry in the beginning. It is something counterproductive for the surgeon, for the surgeon's temperament, as it ends up in a complication at the beginning of the surgery. See this? This is lamina papyracea. Can you see the thin bone? Yes, sir. Yes. So the, remove, the moment you remove the upper part of the ancinate, you remove or uh, you reach right on to the lateral limit of the sinonasal corridor. That is one of the most important part of the surgery. Now see what I'm trying to say, what I said on CT scans. What I said on CT scans, I am at the axilla. Can you see this? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I am opening more and more axilla to simplify the frontal. See the lamina all the way? Yes, sir. Yes. See the lamina all the way? Can you see? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Beautifully demonstrated. This is my axilla which I want to open thoroughly. See this axilla? And I will here show you the most simplified version for the frontal sinus work. Most simplified one can think of. Give me a pack to give you a better field and show you. Just for a while. For everybody, this is the most important step which I am coming to for the frontal in the most simplified manner, I would say. Anybody doing sinus surgery can reach to the frontal in the most simplified manner and I have already given you an idea on CT scan. What is that landmark? The beak. For beak, what is your landmark intraoperatively? Is your axilla. 
I hope um, there is no difficulty in identifying axilla to anybody. No, sir. No, sir. Yes. Once you can identify the axilla, let me show you how easier the further work is. Now, give me 70 degrees. The only thing it requires is a 70 degrees. One, one, two. Now, in no time, you can count in seconds, you will be in frontal. With utmost safety, no ifs and buts. See now, using 70 degree, can you see? Sir. Hello? Yes, it is. I am using yes, 70 degree for regions to see my limits in view. Let me show you. First of all, orient yourself. Can you see the maxillary sinus you have opened? Yes, sir. Then with 70 degree, let me remove this pack and show two landmarks. My medial landmark is a turbinate, which I consider as a useful landmark for the skull base. Can you see? Yes, sir. Yes. And my lateral landmark is what? The lamina. Lamina preparation. See, this is lamina. Yes, sir. This is a reference not to cross. If I cross, I will end up entering into the orbit. Okay? Yes. This is the turbinate the upper attachment with a landmark. If I cross, I will be in the cribiform plate. Okay? Keeping these two references in mind. Now, from here, see the only landmark I'm seeing. This is axilla. What I've yes. done, I've opened up the axilla. Can you see? Yes, sir. Yes. See, with 70 degree, everything under vision. This is what your beak is. Can you see the beak? Yes, sir. Yes. See from axilla, this thick bone behind. Follow this thick bone behind. Can you see this thick bone? Thick bone. Yes, sir. Yes. <laughs> Can you see this? Can you see this? Thick bone? Yes, sir. And once you see this thick bone, anything behind that, see where the thick bone ends. Can you see where the thick bone is ending? Yes, sir. Yes. What is there? The frontal sinus. The frontal sinus. Yes. See again. There's nothing great in into it. See this. This is my beak. Can you see or not? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. From the axilla, you can see the axilla first, which is easier structure to localize. Then from the axilla, follow the beak. And then following the beak, where the beak ends has to be frontal. This I have told you and shown you several times on CT scan as well. See this? With 70, 70 degrees working, working in this direction. It has to be frontal, nothing else. Can you see everybody the frontal sign us? Yes, sir. Yes. Very clear or not? Yes. Very clear, sir. Very clear. See, I have not disturbed any anatomy. Just found a lamina. Just found the middle turbinate. Just found the axilla. Following the axilla is the thick bone, the beak. The beak can be identified being the thickest bone in this region. Following the beak, go behind. See this. Following the beak, go behind. That is the beak above, the thickest bone. See this thickest bone? Yes, sir. Yes. Following the beak, where the beak ends has to be frontal sinus, nothing else. Can you see that? Yes, sir. Yes. I have done nothing great, but just exploiting the normal God's given anatomy, using it as one of the important anatomy, that is beak. See this. I haven't disturbed anything. My anterior artery, I had measured you in centimeters. Remember? Yes. That is far behind 16 millimeter from the beak we measured in this case. And we are working with in the anterior direction along the beak in this direction, the anterior thermodal artery in this direction, far away. So, keeping your lateral and medial limit in view, and that is possible only with a 70 degree, keeping your axilla in view, again only best with a 70 degree, Keeping your beak in view, see the big thick bone 
and go underneath, it cannot be anything else than frontal sinus. I hope it should be very, very clear. Very clear, sir. Any doubts, any suggestions? Uh, sir, yes, do, you routinely, do you routinely uh, uh, do uh, index bulla technique in one of the state conference pre uh, yeah, years? This is bulla. My bulla is still intact. This intact bulla was initially popularized, and I love this technique. Uh, popularized by our own Dr. Sethi from Singapore, who did a number of workshops in our country almost, uh, it's been two decades now, and popularized. You see, the, the beauty is, my bulla is still intact. Can you see this? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. This yes, bulla sir. is going to the skull base, and what he popularizes? As long as this bulla is intact, your antithermal artery is behind. Because the antithermal artery is always behind this upper attachment of the bulla. So that is for antithermal artery. Now, adding on to that, Adha, adding on to that, first of all, everywhere I go for demonstrations, the first thing I've been asked, um, and um, you know, I get to know, the frontal sinus is very difficult. I fail to understand. This is something I made a goal to simplify it. And see, out of all techniques, there are a number of techniques. People will count in number of cells, this and that, to complicate the things. This we have practiced in our thousands of patients, you know, simplest way. See this? Yes, sir. You are in the frontal. And if you want to further, you know, enlarge the frontal sinus approaches to do further, like we have a case today of a classical inverted papilloma, from the frontal sinus and its model skull base and going into the orbit, which we will cap for the demonstration. We'll show you in the extended approaches, in extended approaches, what you need to do to further remove. See, this beak is the obstacle. Let me show you. To approach the pathologies more and more inside the frontal sinus, what is the obstacle? See, this is the interior of the frontal sinus. Yes, sir. You see? Yes, sir. Yes. What is the obstacle? This thick beak we have seen on CT scan. If you remove this beak, the frontal sinus will marsupialize and you can see with zero degree. So those are the draft approaches when you remove the beak. Can you see this? Yes, sir. Yes. So the only obstacle is the beak in those situations and you can remove this with the draft approaches. And we have a case today to show that. We have another case of a frontal sinus CSF leak um, still um, Awaiting the you know clearance, anesthesia clearance. Hopefully, if we get, we'll show you another draft. So if if uh, the things permit, let's see. Now see this is the primary picture. So what we have done another for, uh, again for the junior colleagues, middle meatal entrostomy, upper part of the uncinate removal to show them see the lamina preparation, lateral limit, medial limit, and turbinate already in view. Go to the axilla, take 70 degree, see the beak, follow the beak and go behind the beak, along the beak and you are going to go nowhere else but the frontal sinus. I hope it should be clear. Yes, sir. Yes. And how is the picture? Picture is also very good, sir. Yeah. I, I am amazed to see uh, this morning the pictures from Manoj. I don't know what camera, uh, what recording system uses that was mesmerizing. What a clear, crystal clear SD picture. So we'll uh, like to know from Manoj what he's using, Ida or something else for the recording. What was amazing pictures. Is he in the auditorium? Yes, sir. Can we get to know from him? For the yeah, he just went outside. He will, we'll tell him uh, to clarify. Yeah. So now, Having done this, what I am going to do, see this, this particular beak is so prominent for the articulation. Sometimes the beak has a projection, making it narrow, the frontal sinus opening narrow. In that situation, we can use this, you know, articulated punch. See this? See this? Just to show you, this yes, is sir. amazing articulated punch from the Carl stores. Amazing, amazing. We can bite through and enlarge the opening. See this. That is to take away the 
projection of the beak can you see now yes sir yes sir much sir, better the crescent punch or no it's not a simple crescent punch but it is a glorified crescent punch with a number of articulations to make it angulated perfectly to reach out to the beak yes Can you see now a much bigger opening? Yes, yes. As I remove the projection from the beak. So these are add-on procedure if you want. Sometimes it is very narrow and you have to do that. Or sometimes even a classical draft, particularly in revision situation when you have a lot of osteogenesis, a lot of you know fibrosis, scarring, all those things. Now the next thing, Divas. The next thing, what I'm, um, I will show you here again. To find the ethmoidal roof, as I said on CT scan, behind the frontal sinus is the beginning of the ethmoidal roof. You know it? Yes. Now let it be the posterior table of the frontal sinus will flush with the ethmoidal roof, enter ethmoidal roof. See this in the simplest way. This is my reverse. Blade, the so called adenoid blade, which we never use for adenoid, rather condemn for adenoid use as a rear facing blade. But with 70 degree, you can make it front facing. Yes, sir. See this? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Can you see the ethmoidal roof coming into the picture? Yes, yes, sir. Yes. See the posterior table of the frontal flushing with the ethmoidal roof. Yes, sir. Can you see? Yes, sir. Yes. What I remove this upper part of the buller attachment there. Simple. And see under vision with the simple tool that is a reverse blade. Red 40 reverse adenoid blade. And we call it as a skull blade blade to flush it. Can you see the frontal sinus and the ethmoidal roof together? Yes or not? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And see everything mucosal eyes. Can you see? Yes, sir. Yes. See above, above here is the posterior table of the frontal sinus. And this is flushing with the roof of the ethmoid now. Yes, see very yes, clear? Yes, very clear. And now we will see where the interethmoidal artery. See. We have seen the frontal sinus, we have seen the anterior part of the ethmoidal roof, yet we have not even discussed about the anterior ethmoidal arteries, not even bothered about it. The reason is we know it passes through the posterior most part of the anterior ethmoidal roof. What's my point? Yes, sir. Posterior most part of the anterior ethmoidal roof. So, see this? At this point, Now I will take the bulla. See, this is my bulla. Yes, yes. I can go behind it. See, like this. Yes. See my direction coming out. Fracture and come out. Can you see this? Yes, sir. Yes. In total, to expose the ethmoidal roof behind. Can you see? Yes, sir. Yes. Let me um, remove this. This is attached laterally to the lamina papyracea. So, the major part of the bulla I have removed. Now, give me 40, regular 40. See, this is what I am trying to say. That is the remnant of the bella, uh, remnant of the bulla. See this? Attached to the lamina. Can you see this? Yes, sir. Yes. 
remnant of the bulla this one now since i remove the bulla see the upper attachment is still there yes sir see this all edematous mucosa because of lack of variation and this is the site of my intrathmoidal artery this is the site of my that is the intrathmoidal artery here that is the intrathmoidal artery there can you notice yes 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 so it could come into our picture or notice only after merosal only after removal of the bulla imagine what a safety landmark bulla is unfortunately or 90% of the 898% of the situation in a practice it goes right up to the skull base to protect the vessel from anterior view so if you have such a great landmark see now let me decongest and reverse and show you more about this artery don't get terrified with this vessel all the time this runs through the posterior most part of the antithmoidal cavity hello satish manoj here hi manoj i just picked out for a minute to take a call so i heard you ask me something yeah so hmm. what i was telling i was so mesmerized watching your quality of video thanks so much sadish i, I want to know hmm. really uh, amazing want to know can you see the intrathmoidal artery yes sir yes sir. yeah wonderful hmm. so see how it runs to the skull base and see the location that is frontal sinus this is the cell that is suprabullar cell see this and yes, this is the artery running so almost one and a half centimeter behind the frontal beak see this is frontal beak and we measured on dicom how posterior this is in what direction this vessel is running so don't get terrified all the time so manoj what i was asking mm -hmm. the recording system you use for um, you know this videos uh, satesh uh, seen at one time there was this uh, um, uh, camera that was built by j and j Yes, I, it is no longer available now. It has got a wonderful yeah, system. We can we can uh, we can directly record onto the hard disk without oh. any loss of quality. So you're still using the same one? I am still using the same one. Luckily, those two cameras are still lasting with me all these years. So quality, oh. imaging quality is fantastic when you record and show. Super, super. Uh, it's not available now. It's not available now. They stopped making so, it. The company so shut. Any, any anything you suggest um, as an alternative? i've been trying all kinds of stuff <laughs> I, I, i i was telling those people that i have not even found anything remotely comparing to that it's really good so right now ask for the demo the latest striker system they 4k i want to try out whether it's better than that or not that also i believe you can direct record directly on the hard disk yes for a demo they are getting it i think next week they bring it to our clinic so let me see how it works and let you know It, this is uh, actually like you said no i have not found anything even comparable to that so far yeah that was amazing now see for everybody thank you manoj yeah thanks sadesh this is the intrathmoidal artery you can see this oblique course yes yes sir. going towards the skull base see this yes sir yes so this artery coming out of the orbit running along the skull base running along the skull base and then going towards the lateral mela now see what do we get the information out of it running towards the lateral lamella is some mucosal loose was bothering see this now where is the lateral level of the lateral lamella and why it is important to know here see where this artery is running here see this middle turbinate we always it's a standard teaching we know that don't 
फिडल विद मिडिल टर्मिनेट मच एज इट गोज अब इंसर्ट ऑन द लैटर लेमेला So yes, this sir. level of the lateral lemma is here. This part of the turbinate, this, not this part, not this part. It is this part of the turbinate, and this part of the turbinate, hilana mat. It's so flimsy. See this? This is the thinnest part of the skull base. Even the slightest manipulation, uncontrolled manipulation, can lead to a distant, you know, CSF leak. So this area is roughly from the frontal ostium. Almost a centimeter behind, you have to be very careful medially. This is frontal ostium. Medial to this, there is no way. There is no uh, important structure. But one centimeter behind and medial, that is the level where the anterior quarter artery pierces, and that is the level where the lateral lamella is, and that is something the site for a CSF leak if you are not care care careful. And this is the area where you must show, you know, extra diligence to work. in close proximity when you work there see that yes sir yes yes sir how is the overall picture yes sir so what we have done we have already done maxillary we have done frontal sinus work we have done anterothmoidal roof work we have seen on the landmarks we have seen anterothmoidal artery and now the last work left for us is the postothmoidal and the sphenoidal work and for that i'll change to zero degree again Uh, next case under hello yes sir i hope it is very clear very clear clear see now back with zero degree the best treatment for the middle turbinate that is most important anatomy is respect respect and respect in any given situation you find that it is not very stiff not very solid it is sort of you know it can block the ethmoidal cavity you have to deal with it otherwise not short section this so now this is the picture with zero degree see the maxillary sinus Yes, sir. This one, see this, yes, and sir. this is your remnant of the bulla, which is left behind, uh, lowermost part, which I have almost removed. And what you see this, this is ground lamella. Ground lamella. See, see this turbinate. Yes, sir. It's turning here. Can you see this? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. See the turbinate itself is turning here, lying in the coronal plane. This first part lying in the sagittal plane, then it turning and lying in the coronal plane like this. See now, much better. Oh, yes. That is your ground lamella. You can see much better. Forty. At this point of time, before entering into the porcelain mold and doing further work. the one anatomy i always emphasize to go to the inferior orbital limit see this yes explore always explore this especially see this yes sir this medial okay. orbital angle see this what i have opened up is that very clear now yes sir yes see the limit of the orbital roof uh, orbital floor or the maxillary roof can you see this maxillary roof level yes sir that is one of the biggest i would say landmark for the further work behind zero straight see now i will use this as a maxillary line as a landmark this level of the orbital floor or the maxillary sinus roof see this level yes sir yes i will use medially to enter into the postethmoid see this yes sir i have entered into the postethmoid like this just entry 
Now, as I said during CT scan, my fear, my fear of working or doing a post thrombotectomy here is, I don't know where the when the post thrombotic ends and when the frontal sinus starts. I need to have certain landmark to guide me that this is the end of the post thrombotic and that is the beginning of the next uh, the sinus sinus. See now, what is this? What is this? Can you see something? This is nasal septum. Yes, yes, Hello? yes. Sir. Yes. yes, sir. And this landmark, what is this? This is superior turbinate. Can you see this? Yes. Rather than doing a post what I will do, I will remove the lower part of the superior turbinate first. See this? This is to generate an additional safety. And at this point of time, see my maxillary line? Can you see something at the level of the maxillary line? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. See, just close to the septum. Flush to the septum. Can you see? Yes, I'm going inside flush to the septum. See this? What is this? Sphenoid sinus. This is sphenoid sinus. Can you see this very clear? Yes, sir. The idea is to follow the maxillary line. The idea is not to go above the level of the maxillary line. See, this is sphenoid ostium is never at close to the floor. Rather, it is relatively close to the roof. See this. Yes, if sir. I don't consider his maxillary line as a landmark and try to look for the sphenoid ostium here, I can easily enter into the plane of sphenoid. And that's a disaster. Now, having seen the sphenoid sinus ostium, I told you during radiology, this is the greatest landmark to know for the relationship. As long as I stay anterior to the ostium, once again, as long as I stay anterior to the ostium, my carotid and optic now are never going to come in the way, whether it is on OD, whatever, whatsoever is the anomaly or whatsoever is the situation. As long as I stay anterior to the sphenoid ostium, I can never damage anything. Remember, I said the same thing during the radiology. See this. See this? Sir, yes, sir. Yes. Now, staying anterior to this limit, that is sphenoid sinus, anterior to this, I will remove and open up the entire, entire post moids. See this? See this? Yes, sir. I can yes. flush all these post moids. My lateral limit, I have already told you, it's like a box. The lateral limit is going to be yes. lamina. Yes. See, all the time, my this ostium is in view, and I don't intend to cross it behind. If you cross it behind and work with this like this, it can be a disaster. See, this is the... Anterior wall of the sphenoid. Can you see this? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now, staying anterior to it, you can do any damn thing. You can play around without any issues as long as you are anterior to the wall. See the, see the anterior thermodal artery there? See the yes. post thermodal roof? Yes. See the entire post model roof flushed? Yes. See the skull base? See the orbital wall, the lamina? See my turbinate intact there? And now yes. the last thing left, last thing left is widening of the sphenoid wall. See this? Yes. Sir. You, If the bone is thick, you can use your punch, you can use kerosene, you can use sphenoid punch, you can use hamburger punch. There are so many things, or you can use drill, or if it is not hard, let me show you. I will remove with the micro divider only. See this? Yes. By staying on the anterior wall, strictly on the anterior wall. Hold on. Can you see here? Yes, sir. Yes. 
stay on the interior wall, should not debride anything, should not use any sharp instrument without knowing the where exactly you are into the sphenoid sinus. Forty lagan is there. Ab forty lagan. See this? Yes, sir. I have widened the interior wall till lateral limit. Can you see? Yes, sir. Yes. See the sphenoid forty. Very clear or not? Clear, clear. Yes. Very clear means. Now I will use another safe tool that is a regular red forty. Now using with a zero degree towards keeping the edges towards me, and I can see inside. See, just the bogey mucosa. Nothing else. Nothing else. See, this just the bogey mucosa. Can you see? Yes, sir. Yes. And this is your interior of the sphenoid without giving any issues. You don't need to do anything much over there. This is the access now for the topicals to go inside. You can see very clear. Yes, sir. Yes. So that completes our um, full house face on this side. See, I told you in the beginning, there's a surgery of landmarks. You have to identify landmarks all the time. See this? If your turbinate is floppy sometimes and you find it is not stable, you have to do something. If you have polyps medial to it, a lot of polyps in the olfactory recess, better to do a partial resection. And this becomes floppy because of the pressure of the polyp. This patient had massive polyposis. What you saw polyps today was the minimal one. And that too because of the pre-operative steroid treatment. So this turbinate not looking very strong, though we didn't bother it throughout the surgery. Could you see? Yes, sir. But we need to do something to it. Any questions regarding this full house phase? Delegates, if you have any question, you can come and... Uh... As mics are kept in between. Please feel free to ask any question or suggestion. So, Sir, uh, the middle terminate being unstable. Yeah. Uh, how will you prevent lateralization? Yes. In this particular patient state. There. Yes, yes, sir. Yes. Yeah. There are many ways, you know. I told you. Had there been polyposis medial to it towards the olfactory recess? See the olfactory recess? Very clear? Uh, no yes, polyps, so I will not sacrifice it. Number one. Now I can do two things lower down to everything what is to be done is to be done at the lower end to keep this olfactory access clear. What's okay. my point? Now I have yes, two sir. options. The simplest one I'm showing you. Can you see something? Fort welding. I am making the septal surface demucosalized. See this? Yes. The same thing I need to do. Just mucosalized, demucosalized, nothing else. See this? And we can approximate these two and keep our pack for 48 hours to invite adhesions. That is bulgarization. Can you see this? Another thing you can do is you can put a suture. Now there are a lot of septal needles, suture needles are available. You can put a through and through suture from the turbinate here. After making a little rod turbinate to the septum, then from the opposite side to turbinate back here and put a knot. So what I have done is inviting adhesions between the turbinate and the septum at the lowermost end to prevent obliteration of the olfactory axis. Can you see there above? Yes, yes, yes. And that is called bulgarization. Problem. Yes. So that's the final picture after yes, the full out clear. Phase. And, and that's in, the demonstration, sir. Thank you. In your outpatient department, with your zero degree, you can, you know, 
uh, um, see the progress of the douching going on. This will allow the douche to reach everywhere. See, one of the goals of surgery to give wide opening is to allow the topicals to enter inside the frontal sinus. Can see the frontal sinus with zero degree? Yes, yes, yes. Very clear. Because we widen the axilla to maximum, and this concept we are working these days more and more on zero degree visualization of the frontal sinus. This doesn't give us except a better penetration of the topicals into the frontal sinus. See that? Yes. So that is all okay. about the, uh, you know, the sinus surgery on this side. Uh, we can take questions before we move on to the other case. I am yeah. um, not showing this on the other side. Our team will finish off. And we'll yeah. show you more variety of cases at the time permits. Okay? Yes. This okay. patient, I told you, has a high deviation. Yes. So you can yeah, do a you have to do septoplasty there, no? Unlimited septoplasty limited there. Yeah. yeah. Let me show you a limited one. Okay. Okay. Want okay. to see? Want to see? Yeah. yeah. Yes, sir. A limited septoplasty. And the aim is to give access. See this. Still, I can do surgery from this access. Yeah. What but post going through the narrow space will traumatize. Yeah. So what I will do here, no infiltration. Oh, yeah. Up perichondrial plane now. Yes, yes. See this? Yes. Now that is the muco, uh, sorry, the chondro pony junction, pony cartilaginous junction. Yes. There. And this is actually the high deviation of the bony septum. Yes. What's my point? Yes. So what I'm doing here actually is a See this. Can you see the junction? Yes, sir. Yes. You split it there. See, that is the deviated portion behind. Yes. See this? Yes. This is my, and see this septoplasty we are doing for the post operative purpose. Yes. To allow our instrumentation intraoperatively better. See now, this is. The deviated portion. Yes. But is it the legs force we are using to remove that cartilage? Yeah, the bony bone. Is the is the instrument used to remove that? Bone. See, yes, I'm removing the bone. The instrument used is, uh, is it lux forceps? Yeah, lux, lux forceps. Simple lux forceps. My anterior cartilage is still intact. See that? Yes, sir. And it is the higher bony deviation. Find out. Let me show you. Higher bony deviation, which was responsible, only that part I will I remove. See this. Now imagine the excess previously, and now imagine the excess now. Can you see this? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Can you see the improved excess now? Yes. Yes, we can appreciate this. 
I have not removed the cartilage anteriorly. See this? And I have adequate access now to do my sinus surgery. See this? What a roomy cavity now. Can you? Yes. Yes, sir. So that is something you achieve. See the roomy cavity now. Yes, sir. You don't need to do too much of work, but yes, you from CT scan you can get to know that there is high deviation. I showed you. And now I have see this excess is defined by your view of the middle turbinate. See this? My entire middle turbinate and the space medial to it is clearly visible now. See this? Yes, sir. So that is something um, the excess I have got now. And one can carry out the sinus surgery work easily now. Without any hindrance. See this? Yes, sir. Hello. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. See you the can... access now on this side. Yes. Previously, it was so narrow a space, and now see. So, Rumi, agreed? Yes, sir. So, that is what, um, you know, our aim of a limited septoplasty was to give access, you know. This is purely to give access. See this roomy as roomy as opposite side now. Yes, sir. Yeah, without any you know difficulty or complication, you have ample of access. See now our axilla is right in front of us. Yes, it is the very high, the high deviation is not coming into picture. Can you see? Yes. And that is the beauty of limited septoplasty you can do. Okay. Thank you. you. Are, so we are not you are continuing uh, this case or, or you are going for acoustic neurama? Yes. The next case we are uh, taking up. Um, and as I told you, due to the time and other, other constants, I am uh -huh. uh, choosing uh, this case as will take less time. But let's see, China. So already started or? Yeah, we have already induced the case. Okay. Hello. Thank you, Sadish, for wonderful demonstration. Thank it you. As usual, it was fantastic. Thank you, sir, for that intriguing session. We look forward for your upcoming sessions. As a token of appreciation, I invite Dr. Ram Mohan, former AOI State President, to present a memento to our esteemed chairs. Dr. Sajid, AOI State Secretary. Hello. And Dr. Sadardin Ahmed, Head of ENT Department, Kote Medical College. The second surgery will be chaired by Dr. Manoj MP, Managing Director and Chief Consultant ENT Surgeon and Head of Cochlear Implants at Ms. Yark ENT, and Dr. Prabhagaran, AOI State President. We have a small announcement. The PG students who are presenting case reports are requested to report to the preview room, west side of green room one, to upload their presentations before 12 p.m. today. Quiz prelims will start at 12 p.m. at Sapphire 3. Yeah.
सबको सबको प्लेन तो प्लेन सब तो ना ठीक है तो फेस कौन सा एक और हमें इसका सीटी लो सीटी लो फाइल लो Can we put those lights off, please? I feel like I'm a football stadium. Hi, Sadesh sir. Hello. Welcome, sir. We are ready. Thank you. Manojan Prabhat is here, sir. Hi, Sadesh. Morning once again. Good morning, Manoj. Very Good nice to see your surgery. Now let's get to something that is interesting for me also. You know, I, oh, you know, I don't do those, no? <laughs> but it is lovely to watch you operate, Sadesh. Thank lovely you. bandana, by the way. Thank you, thank you. So nice of you. I know you have been so modest. You have been a such a fantastic surgeon and teacher. and your cochlear implant uh, demonstration started today's proceeding was amazing so now coming from uh, rhinology to otology and skull base mm -hmm. our next um, uh, case is a vestibular schwannoma the more appropriate name is vestibular schwannoma so the name uh, which applies you know more commonly used is acoustic neuroma because it it affects the acoustic now actually doesn't arise on the acoustic now so this yeah, yeah. patient let me uh, how it presented this patient presented with a sudden sensory neural hearing loss mm -hmm. almost um, a few months back okay on left side and um, he was given like as usual steroids and everything everywhere he was uh, he consulted mm -hmm. but nothing happened came to us so on our work up is it our always a policy to order an mri for okay. all sudden sensory neural hearing losses whether mm -hmm. they recover or not i'll tell you i'll emphasize it why mm -hmm. and all patients having unilateral hearing loss with interoral difference of uh, say 25 decibel or so this is now included in the american neurosurgical you know um uh, recommendations uh, neurosurgical association recommendation to an order an mri when patients having unilateral sensory neural hearing loss with interoral difference of 25 decibel or not more to order an mri so we ordered the mri and what we found let me first share with you uh, can you connect the laptop please yeah, yeah we can see it well now now so now on the first image i see when i order for you know uh, for sudden sensorial hearing loss is the t2 heavily weighted images or the drive yeah. images can you see this yeah, yeah clearly in, sir clearly in these images the csf is so bright more bright and prominent than a regular t2 because of the suppressed rest of the background mm -hmm. and what see this is the cp angle system on this side cp angle system on this side see on right side is the cochlear vestibule that's the intraauditory canal with nerves inside can you see very clear yes yes look on the left side yeah look clearly clear. yeah some hypodense lesion in the lateral part of the intraauditory canal mm -hmm. young male see the age about 28 years okay been 3 months complete hearing loss on this side had dizziness and all which has already been compensated mm -hmm. and now he came to us and this mri revealed this vestibular schwannoma now the question is what to do do we really need to operate this and if yes why so this is a making is very important this is, is it a making profound loss adesh yes is it yes. a profound profound hearing loss yeah, yes yeah. yes mm. so this is a making has two aspects now one is whether is really needed to be operated mm -hmm. or second is then if yes then what approach do we use okay so we have 10 minutes to start now and i will take you through these um, two issues one is whether need to be operated or not now 
as we all know there are four nerves passing through the internal artery meatus mm -hmm. and it has already affected the three nerves three nerves means the vestibular nerves had dizziness and now compensated being a young patient so early by the opposite side mm -hmm. and the hearing now which is already affected you know okay so now the fourth nerve is the facial nerve which in vestibular schwannoma because this is a schwannoma this is expensile lesion it is not a invading lesion and right. it doesn't affect the facial nerve in terms of giving clinical paralysis not mm -hmm. only early even in the late in the course okay even in the bigger size lesion they don't present with facial palsy because nerve has a capacity to elongate mm -hmm. and stretch with the tumor pressure whatever big size it is and, and when it is is bigger it expands into the cp angle cistern and doesn't yes. affect the auditory now anymore whatever size it may be you may have 5 cm acoustic yet not affecting the facial now clinically because it, it has a enormous capacity to stretch mm -hmm. yet without being a, giving a clinical paralysis yet the now being so thin like a ribbon like a ribbon like very few fibers still in continuity and still maintaining the clinical you know integrity of the facial function yes, yes that is something beauty about this now so now the fourth function that is the fourth now which is unaffected at the facial now mm -hmm. and the entire entire you know the core of the treatment now is directed to preserve the facial now in future yeah now it has been studied tumors which are growing more as i said the nerve is more and more stretched it has a sometime a common blood supply from the facial nerve and the tumor uh, which has so bigger the tumor it is more the nerve is stretch and then you remove the tumor more are the chances of giving some sort of facial paralysis or paralysis yeah it has been generally observed for tumors more than 2 cm or so hmm. it is so difficult to preserve the facial nerve function to completeness you may have some sort of paralysis some more more paralysis whatever but you will never find a normal facial nerve function after very in true. such a big tumors very true very true so now we have already lost the hearing we have nothing more to lose now this yeah. is the best opportunity to preserve the facial function right and for such a small tumor of the size i will measure and show you this is the best opportunity to preserve the facial function mm -hmm. now let me uh, you see the size of this you know tumor see 9 mm by 4 mm or 5 mm whatever is the size of the tumor and with this size tumor it has been studied our experience also in our hundreds of such cases done the smaller ones this is the best opportunity to preserve the facial now okay So if the, the hearing was or sadhi if the hearing was okay what would you do yes that's a question for master then would be the decision making would be more you know difficult mm -hmm. if hearing is normal in such tumors small canalicular tumors identified as incident lomas on mri imaging mm -hmm. or on certain symptomatology if you find such tumor now the decision making depends upon so many things number one majority of these small tumors the first strategy is to observe observe yeah. with serial mris and all these tumors do not grow substantially you right hmm. a chunk of tumor more than 50% tumors either do not grow or grow very slowly and you can manage on a serial mri until they show substantial growth substantial growth means more than 3 mm growth every year to mean yeah. this substantial growth until then you can observe unless it gives some complications right. now there are certain patients the age is a limiting age is a important consideration small mm -hmm. canalicular tumor in elderly the first and the foremost strategy is observation exactly since they are slow growing tumor if the patient is 65 and above you can very well observe for years together because the life expectancy is not so much mm -hmm. if you can consider as 80 years as a life expectancy you don't mm -hmm. need to bother you can observe and in case if it starts growing in that situation you can use your gamma knife for something to exactly. control the growth to you know uh, contain the growth 
so in elderly is a different different you know scenario in young patients you have to give a cure rather than gamma knife this is simple one thing we know yeah, radiation yeah. is never reserved as a first choice for young people for any reasons and for young people if the patient has hearing loss then obviously like this patient who has already lost hearing there is the yeah. best chance to give him a cure as well as preserve the facial function um, if the hearing is intact i would observe absolutely yeah observe until it gives substantial growth until it gives hearing loss yeah, yeah. until it gives you know sometimes you have this definition of hearing loss should be understood it is not the pyoton audiometry which you know clarifies the quantity or quality of hearing loss it is along with that the speech discrimination score which is more important okay. so when you lose start losing the you know the quality of hearing when you uh, use uh, required for the day to day purpose or what you call it as a you know um, good hearing in terms of day to day use then you have to think of surgery in number 1 number 2 number 2 when the patient present with dizziness yeah, yeah. when vertigo unsteadiness is a major problem maybe mm-hmm. elderly patient for that reason maybe elderly patient when vertigo is the presentation and unsteady nature which is long lasting not relieving when the compensation is not happening then surgery is the answer to treat both the tumor as well as taking away the afferents to relieve vertigo what my point so yeah sudesh in your experience how yeah. many patients do you see presenting with vertigo as a primary symptom less than 10% yeah right yeah yeah less than 10% very very low very low mm-hmm. so that's why i mentioned in the last mm-hmm. very low percent of the patient but yes a patient present with vertigo i have seen patient with incapacitating vertigo okay with small intracanal tumor intracanal tumor mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. yet to operate upon that and relieve the vertigo okay because sometimes these you know uh, persistent vestibular afferents are more disturbing than no afferents you know uh, What's so, so, so suppose the patient is young, and uh, we opted for a, a conservative management. Uh, how will you follow up the patient? Serial MRI. First is um, annual MRI. Then once in two years, until it doesn't show any growth. Okay. If it shows growth, then start showing growth. Then you can get it done six monthly and show. It still shows growth. You have to. Uh, better to discuss with the patient for the removal because this is something which require a lot of decision making with the patient as well patient choice is sometimes a very important factor because this is a major surgery this is the surgery where you uh, result in csf leak and there are always possibility of complications theoretical mm-hmm. possibility though in the present situation you can handle all these in the best way but still you have to discuss with the patient decision making some time patient in spite of everything they want to live with it without getting any problem because there is always you cannot guarantee facial nerve preservation even in the small tumors exactly so the decision making is important to discuss with the patient now yeah. those patients suppose this is a very small tumor had this been little bigger one and cystic tumor i would straight away suggest a surgery in cystic tumors whatsoever yeah, yeah. the size it is you're right hmm. because cystic tumor tend to progress very fast mm-hmm. and in larger tumor in, in case they grow larger preservation of the surrounding neurovascular structure become very very difficult unless you leave behind the wall yeah yeah hmm. so uh, so these are the important factors in decision making whether to operate or not then there are certain issues once you operate then what approach uh one can think of see this there are many approaches um in um vestibular schwannomas the trans lab is the approach which inherently sacrifices the hearing that is the biggest disadvantage every approach has its own advantage and disadvantage yeah so tra- the trans lab has an advantage i will mention but the disadvantage it sacrifices the hearing completely so in decision making any patient who has already lost the hearing whatsoever size the tumor is the 
the preferred approach is the translab. Whatsoever size means, maybe a five centimeter acoustic, yet you can remove through the translab because this is the tumor which has a well-preserved arachnoid, you know, layers all around. It's not that through the translabyrinthine view, the entire tumor in one go should be visible all around. You can debulk the tumor, you can mobilize the non-visible part of the tumor in the field then, and you can again debulk and keep mobilizing the rest of the tumor in the field and remove it. Yeah. So size is not a criteria for choosing the approach for that matter. The other two approaches, retrosigmoid and middle cranial fossa, have an ability to preserve the hearing and they have their different, you know, advantages and disadvantages. Let me quickly go through in five minutes so that we can take decision making. I'll skip. I'll skip this. So conservative management, as we already discussed, in patients with advanced age, short life expectancy, slow growth, patients who are not fit for surgery or minimal symptoms, only hearing ear. This is one of the important criteria to observe as long as possible, as long as the hearing is intact. Now, suppose the tumor has grown to a bigger size and started compressing the hearing. What you can think is, you can decompress by the retrosigmoid route. You can yes. decompress. You can, you know, decompress the posterior wall of the intraventricular meatus to accommodate more tumor without exerting pressure on the cochlear now. A sort yes. of decompression. Remove the posterior lip of the intraventricular canal to allow the tumor to expand and leave the pressure from the auditory now, something like that. So you can debulk, you can use a gamma knife, as long as you can, you know, um, uh, uh, wait, you can avoid surgery in the only hearing ear. And in case required, you can implant the other side. The other ear who has a profound loss, you can implant the other side and get the good hearing. Once you get the good hearing with the implant on the other side, then you can take on a call. Uh, to extirpate this tumor on the opposite side. Okay? Yes. So, these are important decision-making factors like you asked. So, by and large, any tumor, see this, this is a simple algorithm. Any tumor which has lost the hearing, the translab is the approach. Otherwise, otherwise, any tumor which is more than one and a half centimeter, what we believe, tumor which is more than one and a half centimeter is practically Difficult to preserve the hearing. Serviceable hearing. Even if your proton shows 50 dB hearing loss, get the SDS done, it will be poor. Because the more the tumor grows, it affects the cochlea now. Like this patient, you know what happened? Where we have two vestibular nerves, superior and inferior. The inferior one is in close proximity to the cochlea now. So tumor which arises from the inferior vestibular now they affect the cochlear now in early in their course and present with hearing loss. What we believe in this patient, which is a, such a small tumor presented with hearing loss, must be arising from the inferior vestibular now and presented early with the hearing loss. What my point? Right, sir. I mean, very clear. Very clear algorithm. Otherwise, it is so difficult to predict in a larger tumor, whether it is arising from inferior or superior vestibular now. Though you can do a calorie test. Still, if you are getting caloric responses, means lateral canal responses, if you are getting, that means your superior nerve is intact and still tumor from the inferior now, but it is difficult then in a larger tumor. So, by and large, for larger tumors, whatsoever the hearing is, it is never, you know, or really, it is rarely uh, possible to uh, preserve the serviceable hearing and better is to do a translab. You know, a distorted hearing is worse than no hearing. Absolutely. So, it is so your bad to... hearing thing would mean actually speed discrimination scores as a criteria, right? Yes, yes. Now, when the patient has good hearing, like you have asked, see this, for smaller tumors, good hearing, if the tumor is intracanal, like this tumor, being intracanal tumor, good hearing, and you wanted to operate, you know, the best would have been middle cranial first. fossa. That okay. to a laterally placed tumor. This is a laterally placed tumor. Even yeah. the retrosigmoid approach is a hearing preservation approach for intracanalicular tumor. Retrosigmoid is a good approach if the tumor is medially placed. What my point? Yeah. Got it, so got you it. Can, you can drill the medial canal and you can remove the tumor easily. But for such laterally placed tumor, this is never a good case for retrosigmoid because you have to all the way 
come in the lateral part of the canal, yeah. drilling the canal, and you don't see the lateral end of the canal and remove indirectly and end up losing the hearing. For defeating the purpose, you started off. Yeah. So, yeah. Had this patient been having a good hearing, would have been the ideal case for the middle canal fossa approach because this gives you the fantastic exposure of the lateral part of the canal for that matter, entire canal, get preserving the hearing. The only, only concern to me about the middle canal fossa approach, there are two concerns, three concerns, I would say. Number one, it is a difficult approach than any of the all the approaches. Yes. Number, number two, in elderly patient, this is not a good approach because they are, you have to elevate the dura a lot till the petrous apex base and retract it. And dura mm -hmm. in the elderly patient is very friable, you know, and you can end up, you know, tearing the dura. Third is you have to retract the temporal lobe a lot sometimes. And those patients who had history of epilepsy, who had issues in the intracranial issues and all that, we avoid this. And fourth is, see, let me show you through a picture. Yes, yeah, see this architecture of nerves in the intraarterial meatus. Antero superiorly is facial now. Hello? Yeah, yeah, we can hear it. Yeah. Posterior superiorly is? Superior vestibular. Mm -hmm. This is inferior vestibular now. Now, coming from superior, this view, this route, most of the tumor, 90% of the tumor arise from the inferior vestibular now. Yeah, In yeah. order to reach tumors arising from the inferior vestibular now, small canalicular tumor, you have to manipulate the facial now. Yeah, coming yeah. from here, you have to always manipulate the facial now, retract it, and some sort of facial paresis happens yeah, right. to take place. So, you are removing the tumor by the middle canal fossa approach at a lot of cost. Mm -hmm. I have already mentioned the concerns about retracting the temporal law of dural difficulties and then the facial paresis. Uh, many of these patients manipulating the facial now results in some sort of facial paresis. That is the biggest yeah. concern with the middle canal fossa approach. So, you have to choose the approach according to the you know, case. So trans labyrinthine, what we are discussing today, has a lot of advantages. I will show you. The best advantage is it has the most direct access to the CP angle. What do I mean? Let me take you to the MRI. See this. This is CP angle. Can you see? Yeah. yeah. If I, let me show you. If I come from here as a straight line through the labyrinth, can you see? Yeah, yeah, we can see it. The most direct approach I will show surgically. You drill the you drill the temporal bone and you straight reach to the CP angle. Head on approach. Mm -hmm. From the trans uh, from the uh, you know retro sigmoid approach, what happens? This is your sigmoid sinus here. So you have yeah, to yeah. go from behind the sigmoid sinus and attack from behind. So this is a different angle. This is not a head on approach to the CP angle mm -hmm. for that matter. Number two. This translate gives direct access to the intraarterial canal. See this? Yeah. See this? Direct access. With retro sigmoid, if you reach out, want to reach out this part of the canal, you have to drill the posterior lip of this canal. And then drilling, drilling, reach out here. And you can, you have no landmarks, you can end up damaging the inner ear organs and end up losing the hearing. So the advantage of the trans lab is most direct access, no retraction of cerebellum. And the first thing you identify once you open the lateral end of the canal are the cranial nerves. Yeah, yeah. Most easier to identify the facial now than any of the other approaches. So in this case, I will show you first the facial now. I will show you this tumor is so laterally placed, you will be directly onto the tumor and the facial now there behind. What's my point? So in any given case, this is the most, this is the approach which allows earliest positive identification of the cranial, seventh cranial now in the beginning of the procedure. In retro sigmoid, you don't, because in retro sigmoid, you know, you go behind the, see if your tumor is here, suppose let me make out as some sort of tumor. Uh, see, if my tumor is here, suppose this is the tumor. What's my point? Yeah, yeah, got it, got it. This facial now, this facial now runs on the stretch anterior, anteriorly and, um, you know, uh, superiorly from the tumor. Since it arises yeah. from the inferior vestibular. Now the facial now is going on the anterior superior part of the tumor. In retro sigmoid, you have to go all the way across the tumor to see the facial now behind. Mm -hmm. What's my point? 
Yeah, got it. So that is never a direct approach. So the this trans lab is the one which allows you to identify the seventh now at the beginning. It gives you the best exposure of the intraartery canal circumferentially. I'll open up the entire intraartery canal and show you. Okay. And yeah. since the bony cavity, uh, they are in the canal. You can, uh, you know, you can control the CSF leak very well because this, this, uh, in this approach, you obliterate the entire lateral cavity after that. Yeah. yeah What's yeah. my point? So this is the least risk of CSF leak as compared to the other approaches. No mm -hmm. other approach requires fat obliteration, cavity obliteration. Yeah, yeah. That requires a cavity obliteration, and this gives you the best opportunity to prevent the CSF leak. What's my point? In Got case, it. in case post-operatively hematoma or anything can happen happens, in the retro sigmoid, your cerebellum, you retract it, it swells up. You can't go easily back into the same play area easily with a swollen cerebellum. Here you remove the fat and you are back onto the place in a minute, you know, without wasting any time in that situation if you need to re-explore. Okay? Got it. But obviously, it has disadvantage also. I already mentioned the hearing is always sacrificed as an inherent part of this approach. And secondly, sometimes technically difficult when your jugular bulb is anterior place, your sigmoid sinus is so superior and you know, you have hardly any space um, to um, deal with the tumor to instrument for instrumentation yeah. and dealing with the tumor. So narrow access is a relative contraindication with experience. You can deal with that as well. Okay. Oh, yes. So um, anything else, um, uh, Manoj, you want me to... No, no, uh, this contrast uh, in... Uh, we always advise MRI with contrast in case of uh, uh, sudden essential. Uh, you would always order a contrast, Sadish, or would you are okay with the flare? No, contrast is always required. And we have the contrast. See, contrast yeah. is required for differential diagnosis, you know. Yeah, yeah. Mm. See, there could be many lesions in the CP angle and you have to uh, have a differential diagnosis. Let me let me tell you in this particular patient that the contrast imaging uh, coming up. Yeah, see, this is the 3D contrast. Yeah. Why 3D contrast? Let me tell you. See, onus is on the surgeon again to order what kind of imaging. Because you order MRI brain, the radiologist will do MRI brain. One or two sequence. Yes. One or two printout, that's it. Why would he bother doing MRI for an hour? Unless you ask for. Yeah. So what we ask in this particular situation, see kind of MRI, see how many sequences we have got done. This mm -hmm. was... 3D, you know, Fiesta image, what we have seen, 3D, all 3D in all planes, then the flare image to see if any infarction or anything in the brain. Once you suspect an acoustic neuroma in a larger tumor, see, you may have, you know, larger tumor may give a brain stem or cerebellar or infarction yeah. anywhere. And the image which picks up earliest is the flare imaging. You must order, otherwise you will miss. Diffusion imaging is so important. Let me tell you, the diffusion is so important to know even earliest any infarction and to differentiate the masses in the CP angle. Like cholesteatoma yeah. shows diffusion retraction. Uh, uh, other tumors do not show diffusion retraction. So many things you can have for differential diagnosis because you can't order MRI again and again. Yeah, right. So diffusion is very important. Then contrast, we order 3D contrast. You know, the beauty of 3D contrast is see the 1.5 mm section. You can't mm -hmm. miss the lesion so easily. See, about see the regular contrast. Let me show you. If you, even if you write the contrast MRI, they will do this. Con this is contrast MRI. And mm -hmm. see the sections, 4.5 mm. Can you see? You will easily miss a tumor. Hmm. Yes. tumor. If you write contrast MRI, the radiologist, the technician will do contrast MRI with 5 mm sections and you can miss a lot of things. So, in order to get the better contrast and more details, you have to write down 3D contrast, 3D contrast in the imaging where you get even some millimetric imaging. Yeah, yeah absolutely right. I, that, that, that point is so important because people have to know what to order for. Yes, but so, sure. uh, one more question. So you ordered a uh, uh, contrast MRI. For follow-up, you would not ask for contrast, right? Every follow-up? Yes, follow-up, I would. Uh, in a CP angle tumor, when you have operated, 
you hmm. have complete removal intraoperatively so you don't generally yeah, yeah if you leave behind a sliver of the tumor nowadays it has been a policy your manoj your question is valid mm -hmm. nowadays in larger tumors the protection of the facial nerve is very difficult if you try to remove the tumor completely so it has been a policy by various people to remove a sliver of a tumor as a 0.5 cm or so along the yeah. facial nerve mm -hmm. to protect the facial nerve function which is so important yes and observe that tumor with a serial imaging and in case it grows you can give a um, uh, knife. gamma knife mm. or if it grows very fast and anything you can reoperate yeah yeah but the most important thing you preserve is the facial nerve function for the patient absolutely so in that situation when you leave the tumor behind you have to follow with the contrast mri yeah yeah okay now to this very now, clear now this is see this is 3d imaging See, mm -hmm. I have one point five mm. Yeah, yeah. Can you can you see this yeah. tumor in the intra? Yeah, yeah, beautiful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now let me reconstruct it. Let me reconstruct in all three planes. Always reconstruct. Always sit and spend time on your imaging to get more and more details. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Ah, there. Yeah. So now, now hmm. see the same tumor in the in the coronal. Can you see this tumor? Yeah. Yeah. yeah lovely. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And you can measure again. Same hmm. thing. You can measure. Yeah. 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 Nine millimeter. See this? Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Got up. So the contrast will tell you to differentiate from other. Now, if you ask me, for the closest differentiation of this tumor in the lateral end of the intraoperative canal, my second mm. differential diagnosis is a facial nerve neuroma, and yeah, the yeah. third one is a hemangioma. Exactly. Yeah. Now, in those these uh, these three things are so difficult when they are so small on MRI or any imaging, mm -hmm. but their presentation is different. Yeah. yeah. Krish, I told you. Whatsoever size the acoustic neuroma is, vestibular schwannoma is, doesn't present with facial nerve palsy. Yeah, yeah. Rest of the tumor, like hemangioma or facial nerve neuroma, even a small size new tumor can yeah. in the intraoperative meters may present with facial nerve palsy because those are invasive tumors. Exactly. Facial nerve tumor, your facial nerve schwannoma uh, runs to the facial nerve sheath and can present with facial nerve palsy. Mm -hmm. So if such a small intracanalicular tumor Present with facial nerve palsy, it is unlikely to be a face, uh, the acoustic neuroma. Absolutely. Yeah. Unlikely to be vestibular schwannoma. This is important thing to note. Got my point? Uh, perfect, sir. Perfect. Now, the last thing I would emphasize and then go into the surgical part, it is ready, is this imaging. This mm -hmm. is simply we are working on it and we have now 40 patients on, uh, on it to show something you. This is 3D flare imaging. Yeah, 3D flare is see MRI has a capacity. MRI is so versatile in terms of giving so many sequences to get more and more different information. Mm -hmm. When you have a small acoustic neuroma on MRI, you can predict the hearing loss which is coming up. Okay. Or if you have a small hearing loss, you can see the earliest changes in the inner ear. Inner ear fluid is totally black on 3D flare. Means yeah, yeah. Black means black. It has no, hardly any protein content to be picked up by MRI. Yes. With a tumor in the intraoperative meatus, start showing changes on 3D flare. See this? Mm -hmm. Changes on 3D flare, yet showing good hearing. Okay. Whatsoever the hearing preservation approach you use, mm -hmm. it is not going to save the hearing for that matter. Okay. Mm -hmm. Good my point. So, absolutely. Mm -hmm. If some neurosurgeon, anybody X Y Z, looking at a pure tone that you can preserve the hearing and go by the hearing preservation approach, mm -hmm. going unnoticed on three D flare, which has already given alteration in protein concentration in the inner ear fluid. Okay. Is not going to save the hearing in long run. That's very pertinent. So yeah. Don't waste time and go by the translap. Better, yeah. the most direct and get the best chance to preserve the facial now rather than um, uh, wandering here and there with other approaches.
yeah, yeah. so this is something amazing we are working on it and this is something uh, you know <laughs> eye opener these pictures are from uh, your study suggestion no? no 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 this is where we initially started off and we okay. have a lot of pictures now i can share you where we yeah, are work, we're working i am not very curious about this this is very interesting yeah, yeah. very interesting you can predict the hearing loss this is yeah, yeah. and this same thing we are extrapolating in sudden sense in neural hearing loss also manoj yeah yeah patient presenting with sudden sense in neural hearing loss the first yeah. question from the patient and the relatives is will the hearing loss recover doctor yes you say mm -hmm. i will give oral steroid i'll give intratympanic i will give oxygen therapy this that and number of therapies you give okay whether my hearing loss will recover all right mm. and this is one of the way to answer those patients and we are working on it those okay. patients with sudden sense in their hearing loss okay have developed changes on 3d flare in the inner ear fluid okay are unlikely to recover oh wow okay you can prognosticate very well on day 1 okay those having clear 3d flare get mri on day 1 when they present if the 3d flare is you know you uh, know clear get on to the work you can predict a good prognosis whatsoever tell you tell your patient but you should do every possible thing okay. as you have still the chances for the hearing to recover something really worth research ajit we should do this it's amazing so we are working on various aspects of mri uh you know to predict all these things yeah, yeah. so uh, this is different from the topic so i just mentioned so now is the time for the surgical part my associate is already open and now i will change i will wash up change yeah, please. and and then go to the surgical part uh, in couple of minutes anybody has any questions can ask manoj or we can discuss together whatever yeah uh, in couple of minutes i'll be back with the microscopic picture we would like to acknowledge the presence of two esteemed doctors dr alok thakur and dr anand vi they have arrived here and we wholeheartedly welcome you to catcon 2022 where are they where are they where are they ha ah, hi both of them very dear friends of mine doins in the field of ent um i love talking to them every time i see the man and especially i love going to his house uh, if anybody has to i do not know how many of you go for anand's conferences but go visit his house sometimes you see everything there dogs fishes lovely place anand my second visit is due uh, uh, anybody here has got a doubt about what has been talked so far because this is not a usual thing because uh, you know um, we see of course so many people presenting such hearing loss having small tumors so are you all doing imaging the same way as uh, as sadhi has mentioned is a question here and this is something that uh, sadhi, uh, i think is my fault sadhi has been talking to me long time about having a protocol in place having a research project in ai about what to do with sudden snhl are you sure we are all doing this because if we are not doing this we should do it this way there is no point just doing a regular mri brain uh, for a patient or taking a ct scan for somebody with a sudden snhl you have to if you have to do imaging you have to do it this way not any other way any doubts here please next is um, the reported problem of one that will be uh, one question to manoj the, suppose there are uh, recurrent facial palsies in that case also uh, we are supposed to do uh, mri compulsory mri i think yeah a any facial palsy that doesn't recover in a month needs an mri see majority of case of uh, uh, your so called bells idiopathic facial palsy will recover in a month without treatment you don't need to treat bells palsy there is no need to give anything but if those they don't recover in a month you will need to do an mri uh, to do a, to rule out a facial schwannoma any recurrent facial palsy will need uh, imaging of course and again only mri with contrast the same way they did it this way Uh, when you will do an hct temporal bone in the, in this case yeah. where you, you do a, an mri only or an hct temporal bone hct will never pick up this lesion yeah, will never pick up but hct is good for you to plan surgery yes 
you would never know how anterior sigmoid sinuses and how high a jugular is without if you don't do NHRCT. The, the staging for a jugular, high jugular bulb is a CT staging. It's not an MRI staging. Right, Sadish? Yes, absolutely, Manoj. This is a very, very valid point. Let me uh, throw some light on it, what I want to say. For any vestibular schwannoma surgery you do, whether retro sigmoid approach, any approach, HRCT is must. And yeah. let me give you an example why it is. We have many neurosurgical colleagues working. Okay. They do the retro sigmoid approach. You know, what we need to know, the nematization of the temporal bone cell tracts. Yeah, yeah. In the retro sigmoid uh, approach, if you want to remove the canalicular tumor and you drill the canal, yeah, yeah. Many a time there are cells behind the canal, they open up. Mm -hmm. And if you don't have a CT scan to know which cell tract is and where it is leading to, yes. we have seen while drilling the canal with the retro sigmoid, it presents later on with the CSF rhinorrhea. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Because that cell tracts communicate to the temporal bone cellular system, petrous apex mm -hmm. system, and ultimately through the eustache and tube, it drains into the nose. And yeah. in that situation, once the patient post off with a retro sigmoid or anything, if you don't know, if you know the cellularity, suppose you know, what you do, you can go pre-sigmoid first, even if you are doing retro sigmoid, go exactly. pre-sigmoid first and accentuate those cell tracks first. Yeah, yeah very right. Otherwise, very true. Otherwise, yeah, yeah. otherwise post-op, if this happens to occur and present with a CSF rhinorrhea, majority of the time, it doesn't stop by whatsoever conservative measures you do. Mm -hmm. The reason being, because this is a bony tract, it, yes, is, not it, is. Mm -hmm. it is not going to collapse. It is not going to collapse by any lumbar drain, whatever measures you do. It has to be sealed. Now, if you go back with the retro sigmoid, number one, it is difficult because you have already retracted the cerebellum and it has swollen. Number two, yeah. going by the same approach, in white, going to the fibrosis and all that is always difficult. Yeah. Number three, even if you go, what can you do? Even if you, if you try to apply bone wax or something, it is not going to work once it is lined with CSF. Absolutely. It is not going to stick to it. And majority of the times, you have to do a subtotal petrojectomy and obliteration of the cavity. Absolutely. To save the patient. Say, we are, I have done for many neurosurgeons, this procedure yeah. for the post-operative CSF rhinorrhea after okay. the retro sigmoid, this subtotal oh. petrojectomy and obliteration. Okay, okay. So, HRCT temporal bone is must whatsoever the approach you do. Yeah, yeah, that answers your question. No? Uh, even though it is not pertaining to the subject, suppose, suppose sir, we are suspecting a uh, metastatic lesion in the facial nerve. Which one, which one will help? HR, HRCT or MRI, sir? What? Metastatic lesion, facial nerve. Uh, so especially in, it is said that in... Any facial nerve lesion is always MRI. Any facial nerve differential diagnosis is always MRI. Uh, HRCT is only for planning surgery. We, we no, no, not... no, please, please. Please, please. Always feel free. Yeah, yeah. This guy? You can. CTP and that's 0.625. CD will leave. So, uh, we are starting the surgical part. We are associate has already uh, given a retroauricular incision to raise the flap so that we can start directly with the drilling to save time. Can Hello? we? The picture is not visible. We can only yeah, see yeah, us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's coming, coming in a minute. So, it's around 11.30 now. Yeah. 12.30 is our, um, you know, video presentation time. So hopefully I'll be able to finish this trans lab in one hour's time. Oh my. Any questions from the audience? You have to open the light. Yeah, please feel free to interrupt me any point of time. Sadish is an ideal person to ask questions to. Uh, he doesn't get rattled at all. Um, so I expect to come up here and ask some questions. 
there are actually no stupid questions there are only stupid answers so please but see uh, the, any interaction is welcome yeah yeah are Our you next... getting the microscopic picture now yeah very clear satish very good yeah. so this is my favorite um, uh, uh, something i am addicted to it this vario microscope Uh, so sorry. that's a exposure that you need for uh, for a good translab approach yeah so I... what we have done see this is exposure requires all around to eradicate the cellularity yeah to see the exposure of the sigmoid sinus and even behind yeah because in larger tumors you you have to decompress the sinus now this my translab exposure in this case as compared to the other bigger trans uh, you know acoustic is would be little different because i don't need any any i don't need any larger decompression surrounding decompression i don't need to go to the cp angle for the last tumor i need to restrict myself to the canal so exactly. i will not be doing larger decompressions okay don't need to skeletonize the dura and all that here yeah no, uh, not so really Sir, yeah. uh, just uh, uh, we, our next session will be at twelve thirty. We'll have a video demonstration on office-based laryngeal surgery by Dr. V. Anand. One more announcement: uh, the prelims for the quiz for the PGs will be beginning in Sapphire Room Three at twelve p.m. I am also looking forward to this twelve thirty session from the masters. <laughs> That is a very interesting topic. Hey, this is the conical bar. Yeah. yeah. Hey. What the crude work, faster work? No. Like in all inner ear surgeries, the posterior canal wall has to be kept very thin. You can see how Sadish is doing it. मोनोपोलर का टू थोर से so uh, suppose you have a high jugular bulb very prominent jugular bulb uh, what will you do sir same thing we will decompress it suppose we have system. a high jugular bulb anterior sigmoid sinus we have to decompress them to get more space more working space suppose uh, this is the major jugular and the opposite side is not adequate enough in which surgery suppose this is the major side and the opposite side is not compensating much is it a contraindication sir see with experience you can manage uh, this situation but yes if you are not experienced not able to decompress them adequately and manage them then it is a relative contraindication the decompressing the sinus doesn't necessarily mean obliterating it so you won't actually even if we decompress it the flow is still there So if you are in a dominant sinus, you still can get around it by decompressing. This is such a big pneumatized cavity. Yeah, big cavity. Ideal for this case, kind of case. Yeah, but in this case, we don't need that big of exposure. But for that matter, for the demo, Sadesh, it will be nice for people to see. Yes, yes, yes. can see the sinus see the sigmoid sinus you yeah very clearly yeah and what i am doing is a peri sinus you know drilling in case required to be decompressed you can decompress easily yeah 
Dear delegates, refreshments have been arranged outside the hall. I'd request you uh, to help yourself out there as time permits. This is my lower limit as a diagnostic ridge you can see coming into the picture. Hmm. That's the prominence of the diagnostic ridge. Yeah. This is the diagnostic ridge prominence. It is so important to clearly delineate the digestive ridge and it's been done beautifully here. <laughs> See, so much of the drilling is required. See, yeah, yeah. Anna, this advantage of this approach, what people consider, it's a long approach, you know. Yeah. It requires a lot of drilling as compared to the other approaches. Retro sigmoid is the fast state of all approaches. Exactly. Fast. Mm -hmm. You open up, remove the bone flap, and get on to the dura easily. Yeah. yeah. But here it will require a lot of lot of drilling depending upon the pneumatization. What is generally described for vestibular shonamus surgery, I'm not, I'm sure it doesn't apply to people like Sadish. It's one and a half hours of work outside the labyrinth. Labyrinthectomy, one and a half hours, and tumor removal, one and a half hours. This is what people say. I mean, yeah. it doesn't. Yes, like yes. Sadish. Even this more, is... sometimes, even more. But yeah, yeah. see, in this case, in this case, the tumor will removal will not take time. Yeah, yeah. I will remove in few minutes tumor. It is not a big one. Yes, the drilling will require time because it is extensively pneumatized situation. So the big advantage of seeing the digestive is also to know where the facial nerve is ascending from. Because like yeah. Sadish, paramount importance not to damage the facial nerve here. Absolutely. Now the limits, the surgical limits for the exposure would be posteriorly sigmoid sinus, superiorly the middle fossa dura, yeah. inferiorly here would be the jugular bulb. I can see the few of the jugular bulb here. Yeah. And anterolaterally would be the origin, uh, the vertical facial canal. Exactly. Let yeah. me show you. See, this is my way of, you know, faster drilling. I am used to it. Point out, point out. That is, you know what, the Medtronic systems don't have this conical burr, you know, that's very, very irritating. I have them. Yeah, 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 yeah. Even I have... I, I, that's, I have all Medtronic systems now, but... The problem is I don't get the conical bar, which is so nice uh, to you. Yeah, they are so amazing. Yeah. See, now I am in the antrum. Yeah. That's a lateral the semicircle. The yeah, thing yeah. which, there is a lateral canal. Mm -hmm. See, the conical bar expedites your work. Yeah, yeah, beautiful. See, I'm reaching my limits quickly. You can actually see the posterior canal also here. Yes, find out, find out. Now, the thing which I want to see here is the short process of Incus. Yeah, yeah. After the lateral canal. See the glimpse of the short process? Yeah, we can see it now, yes. If I give a tilt, you can see better. See the glimpse of the short process? Yeah, very clearly.
I am using my most favorite band air drilling system. Now over the robot, do see though. See, as long as I run my drills parallel to the incus, yeah, I am lateral to the facial canal. Exactly. Facial nerve is always, always medial to it. Yeah, I'm running. Yeah, very to it. That's a sentinel cell. There. Yeah. Because it is so pneumatized. Now I yeah. think running medial to it. Hmm. Give a little magnification to show you the glimpse of the facial canal. I can see. Yeah, you can see it very clearly, yes. The drill or the diamond, you know? See the pink color now. Yes. I can appreciate the change of color. You can also appreciate that. Yeah, very clear. Now see what I'm doing. I'm closing this cell. The sentinel cell, yeah. Yes, because we don't want the CSF to track through it. Yeah. Important thing in this surgery, I always mention before opening the intraartery canal, before coming the CSF in contact with all these cells, yeah, you yeah. have to drill away all these cells, run diamond and seal these cells because once the CSF lines this cell, even yeah. your bone wax is not going to stick to it. Absolutely. So do whatever sealing of those cells before the CSF comes in contact. Mm -hmm. And that is what I'm going to show you just now. See the facial now. Yeah, facial now seen very clearly now. See the lateral canal. I don't intend to preserve. I have to drill it away anyhow. I am using a larger bar. See this. Yeah, yeah lateral canal is opened. It's ampullary yeah, yeah. I have to open them. See now my facial now. Yeah, very clear, yes. Facial now monitor is essential in this surgery. Yeah. yeah. What I believe, doing this surgery without a facial now in the Western countries is considered as a crime. Exactly. Now see, before going deeper, this is the time to understand. Before going deeper, so that you don't forget, all these lateral cells, see this? Yeah. yeah. You have to seal them with a the diamond, Rukja. You have to seal them with a diamond, bone wax, whatever. Yeah. So that if the CSF comes out, it doesn't go to the other cell tracks and you second tube. Yes. You should seal them adequately. See this? Yeah, very clear. Similarly, below and see this? Yeah. Yeah. Everywhere you have to seal this perisigmoid we have done. Mm -hmm. Sinodural angle. Yeah, I am coming to that in the end. That is the cells under the digastric ridge. Yes. See, this is my sigmoid sinus U, you can see. Yeah. yeah, yeah. See this? That's a jugular bulb below. Yeah. See, all cells have been cleared off. Absolutely. See that? All these lateral cells have gone until in including the canal and the facial recess cells. Yeah. We have defined our vertical facial now. And now I'm coming to the middle fossa plate and that sinodural angle. See this? Yeah, cutting the one. Sir, uh, can we locate the cochlear aqueduct here, sir? I will show you. It will come deeper, sir. 
uh, once we see the introductory canal, I will show you. It will be your point is valid. It is below the level of the introductory canal, just above the jugular bulb. It is very dural. Yeah, very cellular master. Yeah, see the dural. See the cellulite. Yeah. Can you see? See this peridural cell? Yeah. Now completely drilled off. Perisinus, peridural, because all these cells ultimately may drain into Petrus apex cell group. Yeah. Sorry to interrupt you, sir. Participants for the quiz competition are requested to report at Sapphire 3 at 11.50 a.m. Participants for the quiz competition are requested to report at Sapphire 3 at 11.50 a.m. The following participants are requested to submit their case reports at the earliest in preview room. See the extreme cellularity in the sinodural region. Yeah, yeah. Lot of cells. Lot of cells. Dr. Agil Kumar, Dr. Ramita, Dr. Su Sushamma, Dr. Ashta, Dr. Malvika, Dr. Sharon, Dr. Kirti, and Dr. Ammu Dilib are requested to submit their case reports before 12 p.m. in preview room. That is most of the cyanodural cells cleared. See the amount of cellularity. Yeah. Bipolar. Wash, wash, diamond for a while. Diamond. No bipolar. For bleeding in the lateral skull base. Hello. Uh, yeah, we can hear you. Yeah, for controlling the bleeding in the lateral skull base, for bony bleeding, we have options like dry diamond yeah. or bone wax. For soft tissue bleeding, we have bipolar or surgical. cell. Yeah. See this bipolar or uh, dry diamond, dry, dry. See the sinodural angle now? Very, very clearly. See how extensively nematized. This is peridural uh, cell, the squamous plate nematization, over nematization of the squamous plate. So normally if it is a large tumor, so they should have exposed the entire dura, the posterior as well as the middle fossa. But this one, it is not necessary. But you still have to remove all the cells. Yeah, cells you have to remove. Now see the perilabyrinthine cells. Diamond. Now, one of the things if you notice being done because of, uh, you know, psycho flat, you would not say it. Exposing this amount of dura is okay in uh, vestibular schwannoma surgery because it's going to obliterate the cavity anyway. Yes, yes, yes. In a mastoid surgery or a cochlear implant, if the dura yes. is exposed, the arachnoid is exposed, you need to plug it somehow. There, I would not go like this then. Yeah, there, you will not go like that. See, all these are the perilabyrinthine cell tracks now. See this? Yeah, very clear.
this is the region of the solid angle. So, so even though it is not pertaining to this case, uh, can you point out the access to cerebellum uh, at, at this stage? Yeah, where my drilling is. See here, that is the Trotman triangle. Hello, this is Trotman triangle. Yes, sir. Between the labyrinth, sinus, and the dura. Yes, sir. Bone wax. See all cellularity being accentuated. My vertical facial is in view. See, I apply the bone wax there. See that? Yeah, bone wax used to stop me. Chote diamond. Now see, the gross bone removal has been uh, cell removal has been done. Can you see? Yeah, we can see. And I went fast because this was not so important a uh, part of surgery. Yeah, yeah we can mean, see. Yeah. You can stay a little crude. It is acceptable. No, now no, this just. Now this is the ampullary end of the lateral see. canal. See that? Yeah, yeah, very clear. And that is the facial now anterior to it. Yeah. This is delineating my anterior superior limit facial now. Yeah. And see, these are the retrofacial cells. Yeah. See, I'm working retrofacial. Very clear. See, all this what you're doing, Sadish, is to prevent any future uh, CSF egress, no? Yes, exactly. See, what I'm delineating here is the jugular bulb. See, everybody. Yeah, yeah very clearly see. That is jugular bulb. That is my inferior limit. See the jugular bulb. Yeah, beautiful. See this jugular bulb. Suction blocked. Now is the time to drill labyrinth. Okay? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Now this labyrinth is composed. We all know lab. Labyrinth is composed of cochlea vestibule connected with semicircular canals. Here we are going to drill this vestibule along with the semicircular canal. This okay. entire block, and this is the thickest bone in the body. You can see and see. All these three canals, this is lateral one, here would be the superior, here would be the posterior, all have some or other relationship with the different parts of the facial now. Exactly. The superior canal here, I always demonstrate in my, you know, cochlear demonstration, cochlear dissections. The superior canal here, it is going to be here. The dome of the superior canal is the closest, you know, relationship with the labyrinthine segment of the facial now. Yes. Lateral canal has the genu as communication connection with the genu. You can see how close this lateral canal with the genu of the facial now. Second exactly. genu. Yeah, yeah. And this posterior canal has a close proximity to the vertical segment, which is I say 0 0.5 to 1 millimeter deep to it. Mm -hmm. So all three canals have different relationships. See, my facial now is very clear in view. Very clear, very clear. Uh, can somebody give facial nerve monitor to test to show everybody? That's a facial nerve monitor. On. 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 Volume. Volume. Yes. You can hear the beep if your ears yeah, are yeah, very. I can show. Can you can you put some um um. Hold on. No, no. Volume can you arrange? 
only probe uh, is connected or not give a i can see a small beep not a uh, good one yeah is the the the, the muscle accent has been cut out no sadish because yeah. you won't get muscle accent has to be off yeah yeah that is already um, off. can can i ask nsd how long it's been uh, anupam मसल रिलैक्सेंट ऑफ है कितनी रोगी या साइकिल ये कैमरा ये इधर माइक उधर लगाओ उस पर मोन मॉनिटर हम ऑफ कोर्स वी डू हैव नो डाउट इट्स अ फेशन वी कैन सी इट इज ऑलरेडी यू नो यू कैन बेंड इट अ बिट So yeah. We can hear the same thing from the analytical segment. Yeah, we can hear the sound very clearly. Yeah. The thing is that if you repeatedly stimulate the nerve goes into refractory phase, it will stop. We'll see later more. So this is the vertical segment of the facial now. Yeah. And this is my, you know, the cavity drilling, excentration of all cells now. Yeah. Now give me the some uh, right angle. I will remove the sinkers also here, yeah. because later on I will pack this editors more effectively, more effectively with what? Muscle. Muscle. Do you you remove the incus before packing? No. Yes. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Ah, yes. Because if you need yes. to pack it properly, you need to have the incus out. Yes. Yes. You can pack with the incus, but then it doesn't give very no, effective. No. You know. Not. It won't be. Yeah. See, I am just demucosalizing the entire editor's walls. See this? Yeah. Very clear. So our packing will stick later on. You okay. can see the malleus now. Yes. Now give me the uh, same size cutting. Now I will drill away the labyrinth quickly to reach out to the intraartery meatus. Lateral canal. We have already seen this. Yeah, yeah. Now I am with the cutting bar. These three canals, they open in the vestibule medially. The vestibule is medial to the facial now, with five openings. See the two openings. Number one, give me pack. What they told you? Lower one is a non-ampullary end of the lateral canal. Ampullary and non-ampullary end of the lateral canal opening in the vestibule in the posterior and superior wall, anterior superior wall. Yes. Now this is the superior canal. The ampulla of the ampulla of the superior canal is close to the ampulla of the lateral canal. See this? Yeah, yeah. See this? It's ampullary end of the superior semicircular canal. Yeah. And this is non-ampullary end. Yeah, it's a subarcuate artery that's bleeding. Yeah, this is subarcuate. This is solid angle. This is ampullary end of the lateral canal, and this yeah. is non-ampullary end. We'll follow this lone non-ampullary end is going to join the non-ampullary end of the posterior to form the crest commune there. Yeah, this is solid angle, and that is solid angle and the subarcuate artery. The I hope the picture is good through this microscope, Manoj. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. Nothing to compare. Perfect. The subarcuate artery is the upper limit of the internal artery meatus, so you will know that it's below that. Yes, absolutely. It's a posterior canal, ampullary and below. Yes. See this? I what I drilled is the pre-sigmoid this plate. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. this is not very important in this case as I don't need to go to the CP angle so thoroughly. Yeah, hmm. there's no tumor projecting into the CP angle, you know. Yeah, I don't need a wide exposure, but it's still for a, this is a, for a proper translab. Oi, 
don't uh, touch my hand seedha yeah, yeah we saw that posterior canal hey tumhe bowel ko kar the ampullary end of the posterior canal is always underneath the facial nerve yes that is the facial nerve above and this is underneath the posterior canal and this non ampullary and see here yeah. that the non ampullary and this is going to join the non ampullary end of the superior so canal see this see this yeah. clearly yeah this is the region of the end lemur and the lymphatic sac yeah yeah now having seen all the canals i can drill away this bridge of bone to open up the vestibule thoroughly yes. see the vestibule below yeah yeah very clear and that see the, the mike's dots yes that's a representing neuroepithelium now see i am in the medial wall of the vestibule to show you something that the vestibular aqueduct yeah this white yeah. structure yeah yeah this is the white structure coming from the medial wall and yeah. turning here like a j and this is the endolymphatic sac give me a bipolar i bipolarize this region completely Hold on, hold on. Diamond, diamond. See my area. Yeah. The sigmoid sinus, pre-sigmoid region. See all plates flushed. No cell is left behind. Can you see? Yeah, very clear. No, bipolar. Bipolar. Oh, the drill there. See this subarticular artery at the solid angle. Good, lovely. Good, good. Yes. Now, now having drilled the vestibule. a uh, labyrinth this semicircular canal now medial to it is going to be for the we are going to go to the intraortic meatus mm -hmm. now our limits again you can see this is the middle fossa plate yeah that's the uh, jugular bulb behind is the pre sigmoid see this is already uh, cp angle dura yeah and laterally is the vestibule medial to the vestibule is going to be the this is secular area and medial yeah. to this is going to be the intraortic meatus this is extraortic meatus this is intraortic meatus see this same plane yeah so we're cutting that now in order to go to the intraortic meatus circumferentially we need a good exposure more than 180 degree and i will acquire almost 270 degree exposure so that i can see the canal from inside thoroughly yes now all bone entire bone from dura to the intraortic meatus canal has to go yeah
See, there's a huge chunk of bone which has to go. To uncover the posterior wall of the canal. Here is going to be the posterior wall of the canal. Yep. This entire bone has to go. the audience if you look realize that he is drilling in that direction that circle so as to skeletonize the internal artery meatus that is my site of the internal artery meatus going to be to dusri dono bas see how much of the drilling is required and very close in next 10 minutes or so probably will be through see my entire superior limit this lateral canal yeah, yeah. moti there I will make the superior trough to the canal. You are seeing a slight change in color to the bone. Yeah, yeah, that is dura. You are coming close to the dura. This underlying dura. My canal is going to be here. Yes. Like action artery canal. Yeah. Oh, 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 oh. Some fibula bulb bleed, sir. Need to put some. No, no, this is outside periosteum. Yeah, that one. Nothing oh, yeah. else? Yeah, nothing Just else. Just outside periosteum, it is. You know, bleeding from the jugular bulb is more difficult. Yeah, yeah, it'll be very. You get these little vessels outside the uh, periosteum of the jugular bulb. Yes. You must see the a cochlear aqueduct somewhere in that region, no, sir? Yeah, it is just about the jugular bulb. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hmm. And the structure which is closest medial to the arc aqueduct. Yeah. That is the aqueduct. Let yeah, me yeah, show you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The see. structure which is immediately medial to the aqueduct is the glossopharyngeal now. Okay. Hmm. As it comes out of the jugular foramen. That is the aqueduct. Yes, you can see it clearly. That is the aqueduct. See my jugular valve? Yeah. And see how much the thick bone I am drilling. See, once you open the acleduct, is a is a strategy in vestibular schwannoma surgery. So mm. it keeps on releasing the CSF. Yeah. yeah. No, no, no.
This canal is almost a centimeter deep canal. So it is all bone, centimeter deep bone has to go. You know what, Sadish, I'm very impressed. You, you, none of your drill noise is coming across through. How did you, how do you guys manage to do that? None of the drill noise? We can hear your speaking, but we don't hear the drill noise. And that is very nice. <laughs> how did you thanks manage? To, thanks to Ben, ben Air. Yeah. I am not doing anything. Can you see the canal, prominent canal I am working around? Yes, yes, yes. Is superiorly the canal content, superior to the drill. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. I'm making this inferior trough of 270 degree. Yes. See this? Hmm. Yeah, very clear. See the canal? Yeah, yeah, you can see it. You can see the periosteum of the canal very clearly. I'm almost on both sides. I'll go around 270 degrees. Yeah. yeah. The whole idea is to expose the canal without injuring the periosteum. So that's what he's been doing and it's done so beautifully. Yeah, all contents are within periosteum. See my canal content, 360. I'm I'm see 270 degree all around. I'm going. Yes, yes. See very clear? Yeah, very clear. Making a bigger and bigger trough. Diamond. Bleeding is slightly rotating. See my canal. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't bother, it will stop. Look now. See it has stopped? Yeah, yeah stop. So, oh, this is the canal with tumor in it. Yeah, yeah. And that's a posterior lip of the AAC. Yes. And very, very hard bone it is. Yeah, yeah. This is the hardest bone in the body. See, my, how could I, how could I reach so fast? Because the maximum work I have done with the cutting bar. Yeah, yeah. Though it is dangerous. This, if it was a large tumor, uh, um, Sadesh would actually remove the bone between the dura and the sinus tube. But here, that is not needed. Yeah, not that is not needed. This is not going to the CP angle. Cutting this is okay. You just need to remove that lip, which is between the uh, posterior fossa dura and and the IAC. But it looks very easy, but it's not.
That is that uh, big lip of bone there, which needs to be removed. Yeah, yeah, that has to go entire. See, this is one centimeter depth canal. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. You have to drill one centimeter deep. Oh. Bipolar. Yeah. See the vertical height of the canal yeah. right from here till there, one centimeter. Medial to lateral. It doesn't look deep when you see it with the camera, but actually, when you do it with two eyes, it is really, really quite. See, if you you know, compromise with the exposure, yeah, yeah. Mm. you're likely to invite complications. Absolutely. How much I am expanding, extending, extending, because then my tumor removal will be a cakewalk. Oh, that is beautiful. That is very nice. You've almost got to the lips. Sir. Yeah. In tumors in the transapical approach, if you add on transapical, mm. you know, for more mm. anteriorly extending tumor. Okay. I would do circumferentially. 360 okay. degree. Complete. Complete. I will get more exposure anteriorly if the tumor is going far anteriorly towards the brain stem. I won't Some mind. Ronja to remove that last piece of bone. Do you use it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 100%. Yeah. A diamond though. See how deep we have gone so far. Very deep. Use the largest possible burp for that place. Yeah. yeah. See the canal below? Yeah, yeah. We are we are nearly there. See, I left a thin bone over it. Hmm. Now I am with the diamond again. See, the EM periosteum looks white. If it starts looking pink, that means you have gone through it, which is not very good. This is exactly how it should be done. Yeah, the bone is moving. Yes. See, this is dismantle, and I will dismantle from this side as well. Yeah. See this bone? Yeah, yeah, that bone is moving. I'm very greedy about more and more bone removal. Yeah, I know, no. Yeah, there is no need to compromise there. Yeah. One dog.
one size smaller that is a coarse diamond i was telling you guys about earlier yeah coarse diamond it is it is not a polishing bar it's a coarse diamond yeah see i have gone beyond 270 degrees see this yeah, perfect hello uh, yeah very clear now actually right, you can see the tumor oh so this yes. see the tumor is dying to come out yeah yeah tumor is dying to come out the last part of the bone yeah, perfect i told you tumor removal won't take time mm -hmm. couple of minutes and i'll be through fine fine getting some csf leak now yeah yeah i want that to come out had i gone to the cp angle i would go to the cistern and open it yeah yeah hmm. let it see the total volume of csf in the body is 150 ml let it come out yeah yeah it allow the csf to drain out from the yeah, cp yes 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 the patla de see the tumor is coming on its own i don't yeah, need yeah. to do anything is getting delivered yo patla de it will come out in a minute the facial nerve is entero superior see this from is or this orientation yeah yeah mm. posteriorly from my side are the vestibular nerves this yeah. is entero superiorly here going to be the facial nerve mm. and entero inferiorly going to be the cochlear nerve yeah side circular i am letting the csf to come out this lateral bone is the cresta yeah with this tumor yeah. i am i am opening the i am opening the periosteum from below mm -hmm. see the intraartimeters yeah 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 see the nerve yeah, see yeah. the nerve and the tumor yeah. see this tumor yeah yeah i told you it will come out in a minute see i am right on the nerve uh, on the tumor hmm so just here you can see the cut end of the inferior vestibular no Is this? It's a yeah. problem. Yeah. Tumor has fallen out. Pick that. Pick, pick. Then I. This is the intraartery meatus inside. Hello. Yeah, we can hear. We can see very clearly. Very, very exciting part of the surgery. Yeah, I'm separating this. Yeah. This should be the facial now. Yeah, the one on top. Yeah. Yes. and see the most important thing this cochlear now yeah yeah hmm. the brightest of all is the cochlear see it is involved cochlear now is separate now it is yeah yeah it is separate but see it is involved by the tumor here mm -hmm. where it has uh, given hearing loss see that yeah 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 adared adared mean involvement adared it's an inferior see, this is the vestibular now behind yeah behind For the from where the tumor is arising, can you see? 
Yeah, yeah. Very clear or not? Very clear, very clear. This is vestibular now. Now, give me a bipolar at the lowest current. You can see the facial also very clearly now. Very clear. We don't need to do anything there. Yeah. Do you use a CUSA for large tumors, Sadish? Pardon? Do you use a CUSA, CUSA for large yeah, tumors? Yeah, always, always. See what I've done? Yeah. I am coagulating the vestibular now. Give me a second. Why I'm coagulating? Because once I cut it, it may retract. Okay. Oh, all right. Oh. Oh, beautiful. Now, surface? Yeah, beautiful, beautiful. This is why we should not call it an acoustic neuroma. Vestibular neuroma. <laughs> because uh, <laughs> the, it arises from the vestibular now. Beautifully done. You can hear the applause. You can hear it louder, please. Thank you for your patience. I know your um, time is... Uh, that is the cochlear now, see? Yeah. That see, is in the fact, facial you... now there? That is the yeah. facial now? Yeah. Sadish, actually, if you leave the cochlear nerve intact, now people have even started implanting this people if the cochlear nerve is structurally intact. Yes, it's structurally intact, you can. Yes, you're right, you can. See now? Yeah, beautiful. That is my intraotrimiatus. Yeah, yeah, perfect. Now, I will take your two more minutes. Sadish, mm. sir. Two more minutes before you start your lecture. I don't want to take your time. No, no, no. We have time, we have time. We, so, you, we are still on schedule because it is now still 11.23. Really? 12.23, sorry. Oh, 20, we, have done, oh. we have seven more minutes. Cut. We have seven more minutes, so I will finish exactly in one hour. See? Yeah. Cut. So I just sell on the... Cut end. See, CF has, CSF has escaped. Yeah, yeah. No bleeding at all anywhere. See this? Yeah, yeah. Not a drop. Cut, <coughs> cut, fast. Cut. No, we put the layer banana. See, I will tell you, once you do canalicular tumor, how to efficiently prevent a CSF leak. Okay. This is almost, uh, now we have long series, almost, I can say 100%, you can avoid a CSF leak once you have not gone to the CP angle uh, system. Yeah. Glass. I will show you something. Okay, no? So there is, you can see the field absolutely dry. Very dry. Now I will show you something. I have taken a sliver of fat and okay. I will comp compress it and show you. Mm -hmm. um, even though in textbooks and all they describe that you should incise the periosteum and re-suture, I think it's impossible to do it. I have never been no, able no, no, to. No, no point in doing anything. No, it is completely. That, See, this is a glass slide. Okay. Hmm. I am trying to compress this fat. See this? Okay. This is another glass slide. Okay. Com compress it. See this? Oh, wow. See this fat. Mm -hmm. This is pure fat I have compressed. Okay. okay? Mm -hmm. Let's remove it. Come on. Glue. Ready? See, even with the surgery cell and all this thing, no CSF yeah, is coming. There's no, there's no leak. Now, but it is not a efficient seal. I know. So what I am doing, see this flat piece of fat. 
Mm-hmm. I'll wrap all around and put a glue. Glue. Okay, that's nice. You don't Number put one. Underneath. I generally put fascia and then fat. Yeah. See, once you put fascia, fascia doesn't stuck to the bone so efficiently as the fat. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. It is more raw. See now, now yeah. on this I will put two or three long strips to compress this. Okay. Mm -hmm. Long strips, two or three, and before that I'll harvest a small muscle. Give me knife. Two minutes more. Absolutely. Knife. Or here there. There there there. A muscle from anywhere. If I get knife from. See this? Yeah, yeah. I am harvesting a small muscle piece. Yeah. This is for editors. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Editors always muscle because this muscle swells up. Okay. Mm. So muscle is something which swells up initially mm -hmm. and it will fit snugly into it. Some suggestion. Why you need to take out the incus before doing it? That's why. For this efficient sealing. Yeah. See, first of all, we have sealed the CSF below. So it is not going to come out. Okay. In case. It should not give rhinorrhea. Okay. Hmm. See this? I will compress with the surgery cell like this. Yeah, perfect. Now I'm waiting for the glue at both ends. This and this, whatever I place, I okay. first place the glue mm -hmm. to keep everything in place. See this? Both the things. Yeah. They will remain in place. This I will place like this and keep some glue. And then. I'm waiting for the glue. It may take 5-10 minutes. And then I will put 1, 2, 3 or 4 strips of fat and then okay. on top a uh, horizontal piece above it to compress all. So okay. That will be a sort of complete 3-dimensional ceiling. Not ceiling. 3-dimensional okay. means my entire from right lateral cortex till there 3 centimeter. 3 okay. centimeter long tunnel will be completely sealed with the fat. It is not a two-dimensional ceiling like you place some seals on there directly. Okay. It will be a three-dimensional. All the way, all the way, three centimeter complete tunnel will be packed. Okay. It can never give CSF leak. In my practice, it has never. Yeah, perfect, Sajish. Wonderful demonstration. That we is love what a trans level advantage I mentioned that you can efficiently seal for the future. See this? See this? Yeah, yeah. So this is what, uh, ladies and gentlemen, what a perfect surgery should be. Complete removal of the tumor, adequate exposure, safety for the facial nerve, and prevention of CSF leak. So okay. you've seen a master at work. So um, let's give him a big hand once again. Thank Adish. you all. Thank you for the patience. I'm waiting for the glue. We'll apply later. You can continue with your, um, you know, lecture. Patience. It was like watching Ethan Hunt. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so it was it was brilliant and we enjoyed it. Uh, it was it was done super quick and I don't think I never thought you will finish in this time. But oh. that's okay. Wonderful, Sadesh. Great. Thank you. Always Thank you. Glue is ready. Give me, give me, Manoj. Yeah. Just a minute. The glue is ready. Just yeah, last yeah. minute. Oh, the thing, the thing also. First of all. This fat. This yeah, is yeah. so important to keep in place. Okay. Huh. Number two, I'm lagana glue. Muscle glue lagan. Hmm. Number two is this. Compress this. See this? Hard. Yeah, okay, okay. It's and then apply the glue so it will not mobilize now. See this? Okay. Lumbi strip. Now I will use few strips patli.
See this? Okay. Hmm. I can press through it now easily. Okay. So it will be a three-dimensional tunnel. Mm -hmm. This will be three-dimensional tunnel ceiling. It is not one place or two-dimensional ceiling. Okay. All the way, the entire or the entire tunnel is being sealed. Perfect. Yeah. And now a bigger piece, literally, and that's it. Yeah. 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 Wonderful. And see this horizontal piece. Oh. So this will be sort of overpacking to keep a yeah, pressure yeah, yeah. and on the inside layers. Yeah. And then the periosteum. This will be the final seal. And see, our um, suturing will compress on it all the way. Yeah, you're right. And how long will you keep the patient uh, there, uh, Sadesh? Two or three days, maximum. And so initially, initially, some patients hmm. who had vestibular signals intact okay. may develop some vertigo. Yeah, yeah, they do. Yes. It may yeah. take some time for compensation. Okay. So initially, some patients who the vestibular system is already died out, mm -hmm. they will not perceive any vertigo. Okay. Young patients they recover very fast as the compensation is very fast. Mm -hmm. Elderly is a problem. And what about post-op medication? Would you give an antibiotic? Yes, give some broad spectrum for a couple of days. That's it. Nothing great. Nothing is required now. It is completely sealed. Forget about it. Thank you, Sadish. Thanks. We'll Thank more. You. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Sadish. You. Your surgical skills has indeed kept us all in awe. As a token of appreciation to our esteemed chairs, I'd like to invite Dr. Prakashan. Senior ENT Surgeon, Allied Hospital, Trishur, to present a certificate to our chairs, Dr. Manoj MP and Dr. Prabhagari. Moving on to our next session by Dr. B. Anand. I would like to invite on stage our chairs for the next session. This session will be chaired by Dr. Gautam, Senior ENT Consultant, Kasurgod, and Dr. Jay Kumar, Director at Jay Kumar's Laryn Laryngology Group, Trivandrum. We are pleased to welcome Dr. Jay Kumar, sir, a very special guest who we have amongst us. He's a director at Dr. Jay Kumar's Laryngology Group, Trivandrum. He's also the founder and vice president of Association of Phono Surgeons of India. We are esteemed to have your presence amongst us, sir. It is with great pleasure that I would like to introduce our next speaker. We have Dr. V. Anand, a renowned ENT surgeon known for his expertise in creating a contemporary ENT setup. He is the director of MCV Memorial ENT Hospital, Polachi Coimbatore. Dr. V. Anand did his MBBS from Madras Medical College and post-graduation from Kasturba Medical College. He has won numerous laurels in the field of ENT. Notably, he has won the RAF Cooper Award thrice, first in the year 1991 for his invention of nasal septal clipping, followed by in 2014 for developing chordoplasty, and finally in the year 2015 for his work on stapes microsurgery. He is the winner of the E. Merck National Award 
in the year 2002 for Forna surgery. He has numerous publications on autosclerosis, fibroscopic laryngeal, cylindroscopic, septoplasty, menias disease, and vocal cord paralysis surgery. He is also the course director of NSCON Live Surgery Workshops and Short Term ENT Fellowships since 1993. With great privilege, I welcome you, sir, for your session on office board laryngeal surgery. Good afternoon, everybody. So we have got two stalwarts standing on either side of the chairperson, Dr. Jay Kumar, and of course, uh, Dr. V. Anand here. We're just waiting for uh, the laptop to be connected. Thank you so much for uh, uh, being in this session. So sir, this next us, case, sir. yes, sir. Tell us about your next patient, yes. Yeah, so this patient is a lady who presented with some, uh, you know, dull headache and orbital, you know, prolapse or proptosis, you can say. Clinically right. presented with proptosis and dull headache. Somebody did the CT scan. First of all, let me show you the CT scan. And CT scan findings were some soft tissue mass. You can see. Are you getting the CT image, please? Now we do. We see the axial image, yes. Yeah. Some soft tissue mass in the medial part of the orbit. Yes. If quite reconstruct a... it, if we reconstruct it, if we reconstruct it, uh, Yes. This was a mass lesion occupying this part of the frontal recess and mm -hmm. upper part of the orbit, medial part of the orbit. Not much information we could get. Then we had another soft tissue window. This was a CT scan. Patient already done before coming to us. See this? No. Yes. This kind of a mass lesion with erosion of the outer wall superior wall and prolapsing into the orbit, the orbital roof was completely decent. Yes. Now with a CT scan, you can't differentiate into soft tissues. CT gives you bony details. Soft tissue, it can give you just as an opacity. It could be mucosal, it could be soft tissue, it could be benign tumor, it could be malignant tumor, vascular, non-vascular, it can't differentiate. It can just give you a soft tissue opacity. Right. So the MRI was done. And it was interesting to see certain findings on MRI. See the MRI. Yes. This is fat suppressed T2 weighted imaging. Fat suppressed T2 weighted imaging suppresses fat everywhere. And the, whatever lesion, it has become prominent. This T2 weighted imaging, can you see this? Some, we some see it. Al alternate, you know, bands of alternate hyper and hyper, hyper and hypo intensity into the region of the frontal sinus. See this? You see that? Yes. This is alternate bands of hyper and hypo intensity. We always look for cerebri form convolution pattern. We call that cerebri form convolution pattern. That is right. suggestive of inverted papilloma. Though inverted papilloma is a pathological diagnosis, but there are certain features of inverted papilloma which gives you suspicion on radiology. That could be inverted papilloma. And one of them is these kinds of alternate bands of hyper and hypo intensity. The reason being, inverted papilloma arises from the surface and as it grows, the epithelium grows into the stroma. So these kinds of patterns of, you know, alternate bands, this, this hyper intense band is Inflammation, hypo-intense band is tumor. This inflammation of the mucosa and the tumor. Tumor and mucosa in between like folds. This is what inverted papilloma is. And it looks very uh, better on T2-weighted. It, it is much better on larger tumor than the smaller ones. And then you can confirm on contrast as well. So this was the initial observation we made. We don't know whether it is papilloma or not. But there was nothing in the nasal cavity on endoscopy, everything clear. No finding on, uh, on endoscopy, uh, no any positive finding, I mean to say. And see, this lesion is typically occupying the anterior part of the ethmoidal cavity. The, that's the anterior ethmoidal cavity. And frontal recess, the outflow of the frontal sinus. 
that is anteriorly the frontal sinus, and then it is prolapsing by means of eroding the superior wall of the orbit into the orbit, but maintaining the planes. Right. See, maintaining the seems, fat planes. Seems yes, extra periosteal. Yes, it is extra periosteal. It is extra periosteal. So now let us see on the certainly more important findings on contrast. See this alternate bands on contrast. Hmm. Alternate band, this is classical of cerebriform convolution patterns. And see, this periosteum looks intact. The periosteum all the way looks intact. So it is because of the obliteration of the frontal outflow, this lesion is expanding more and more towards the thinner wall which it could have eroded. And that is the superior wall of the orbit. And that's how it is, you know, prolapsing into the superior wall of the orbit, presenting as a... Uh, uh, proptosis. Hmm. But the planes are intact. See the superior rectus muscle, medial rectus muscle, superior oblique muscles, all are intact and it is extra periosteal. Now, some more information from the sagittal plane. This is most important section for this particular patient. And what we see here, see, see the convolutions pattern? Yes. The best part of the MRI it gives you a sort of idea about the diagnosis that could be papilloma by means of the CCP, the CT scan cannot give. And secondly, if you trace the CCP, you can have a fairly good idea where it is attached to. So, so what we can uh, see, yeah, yes, sir. So what you see out there that the bony plane between the cerebrum and the frontal sinus is violated at one point. Yeah, one Does point, that cause yes. a concern? Yes. At this point, is it violated and looks like it is attached to the posterior table there. But it's very possible posterior table just eroded because of pressure. Yes, yes. So something could you be. noticed. Could and be, it could be. Connected, though the two, of course, have different uh, attenuations, so it's likely not to be so. But, you, but that's a small point of concern. Yeah. Now see this CCP if you follow. Hmm. CCP, if we follow, they're emerging from here. So this is one possibility that this uh, lesion is attached to the anterior cavity or could be this is the level of the bulla ethmoidalis above. Right. So see the CCP extending. So CCP, either it is attached there or attached there going up, could be any possibility. Now, in papillomas, this being a benign tumor, this is a classical picture of uh, giving me a strong suspicion of papillon because of this classical CCP pattern. Now so we haven't done a biopsy, but based on the radiological findings of this trial that you see, yes. you believe it is likely to be an inverted papilloma. Yes. And of course, and see, there is no, like mass a, no mass on nasal endoscopy, in any, no mass in any, uh, you know, sort of uh, in a nasal cavity or anywhere to take a biopsy. It seems the agar nasi are involved. I mean, it's coming fairly far anterior. Yes, far anterior. So now yes. we will take up. Uh, we will have. We have a frozen frozen section facility round the clock. So hmm. once we get onto the mass, we'll take this for frozen section for immediate reporting. We get in 20, 30 minutes the idea of the what it could be on frozen section. Now, in inverted papilloma, assume that if it is an inverted papilloma, there are certain concerns. Inverted papilloma is notorious for two reasons. Hmm. Number one, it is notorious to recur. And number two, it is notorious to turn malignant in certain percent of the patients. Now, if you go in the depth of these two things, first of all, to me, this is a benign tumor. And like any other benign tumor, if you remove completely, it cannot recur. As simple as that. Like JNA. If you remove completely, it cannot recur. But if you leave behind even a smallest portion in the bone or somewhere, it is likely to come back as a bigger mass and more notorious lesion. True. Uh, I, 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 sir, I give your reference of your study you published in Head Neck Journal in 2016 about the JNA infiltrating the Vedian Canal. I give yes. your 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 uh, publish uh, papers uh, reference everywhere. And you had almost 40% patients of GNA invading the median canal. 
Yes, more than that, more than eighty, I would say. Now you know, if you go back in the retrospective uh, reason, uh, area, where the open approach was pre- approaches were prevalent, mm-hmm. what you do in open approaches, you remove the tumor grossly, gush of bleeding and pack and come out, and actually you don't have anything to look into the nooks and corners where the tumor can go, and even a small sliver of the tumor left behind is going to come back and termed as a recurrence. it is never a recurrence it is a residual tumor which has grown back now with the you know with the endoscopic uh, facilities endoscopic development we see under vision under magnification bright illumination wherever the tumor is going if it is going into the pterygoid it is going in the median canal we can drill out the pterygoid easily and remove the tumor completely and that's why the endoscopy is a better outcome less chances of recurrence but this recurrence is a so called recurrence it is never a recurrence it is a residual tumor which has been left behind and that tumor has a propensity to invade the the cancellous bone the aversion system of the bone similarly in the papillomas what i mentioned if you go in the depth of these two findings what i mentioned one is the recurrence and one is the malignant transformation so this recurrence is never a recurrence this tumor no, it was wherever it is we agree with that one that what you find out here is a residual tumor it's not really a recurrent tumor and yes, the sir. previous techniques did not quite allow us the the surgical finesse to work at this skull base and maybe that's why recurrences were more and today yeah. as you said yes so, so uh, yes sir so you're getting ready for the operation uh, yeah. we does the scans Uh, and i saw those muscles but could we also see the superior oblique i mean you mentioned that you could see all those muscles because my little concern if you yeah. take the coronal scans i'm just being the medical devil's advocate i'm sure you will but if you do the coronal scan yes yes so this uh, uh, this uh, angle of uh, small immediately you see the orbit going up the fat of the orbit sort of going up between the tumor this as you see the tumor go up into the frontal sinus and then the front then the floor of the frontal sinus is uh, is dehiscent and the and the tumor prolapses in yeah. and my little yeah. concern is that this little nubbin of uh, orbital fat that is sort of going up may actually include the the trochlea and the and the and this superior, superior oblique, oblique superior oblique and so you might find the superior oblique come in your way as yes, you sort yes, of start yes, yes. that bit of a concern there you see that is that the superior 100%, oblique 100% 100% you are right now what i am what i am planning what we generally do this for many of such indication is the orbital transposition which i am going to demonstrate right. right so you would push it down you push the yes, whole i will push it down laterally and down lovely laterally and down better. and we'll have a thorough access from here to there i'll have a and thorough you, access like i'll have a thorough access like lothrop? like this mm-hmm. so that's a lothrop you're planning from the contralateral yeah. side so i will do a draft to on this side and then right. do the orbital transposition and then everything will be in front of me if i need more exposure to go laterally i will go transeptal with my endoscope to get more you know visualization and more instrumentation because the conventional technique the conventional limits of endoscopic surgery were that yeah. if you had a tumor which was going yes. lateral to the infraorbital nerve yes. or the middle orbital line or the pupillary line then yes. uh, it was difficult to access but of yes. course the world moves on and uh, so, but it is a challenging tumor it's a challenging yes. tumor i don't deny that at all now, it's very sir is tumor. right earlier it was used to be considered that that the tumor beyond the line of the lamina papyracea going laterally like this line anything beyond is difficult to address endoscopically now with the development in the science of endoscopy equipments angle equipments angle divider angle instruments angle telescope the navigation system people have started tumor and now it was considered that any tumor lateral to the mid papillary line are difficult to you know address now yeah. with the advancement we have address even tumor reaching up to the terion with the orbital transposition transeptal approaches modified lothrop's approaches and so on and this is the classical case for a orbital transposition with draft to it is it is challenging both because it's yes, going it to is. lateral and because it's very anterior yes and yes the endoscope is challenging in both these situations but yes. of course we have the master here to show us yes. how to do these difficult situations 
now very, the challenge nice. challenge is our multi um, uh, level in this situation for this situation for this case and that's why we divide the papillomas in two categories the favorable and non favorable and to me this is non favorable category the reason being as i was saying for papillomas they cannot recur unless you leave behind in the bone where they are attached to so they have again the tendency to invade the cancellous bone and enter the evasion system and you have to drill away the underlying bone if you remove the underlying bone thoroughly you can give a cure now mm -hmm. favorable are those tumors where it is easier to remove the underlying bone like let me give an example i call those tumors favorable like this k uh, let me give an example yeah see if the tumor is attached to the medial wall of the maxilla you mm. can do a uh, dankers and remove the entire medial wall of the maxilla it is favorable if the tumor is attached to the anterior lateral wall you remove the anterior lateral wall you can give a cure if you tumor to the attached to the lamina papyracea you remove the lamina keeping the peri orbita intact you can give a cure if the tumor is attached somewhere to the terminates or septum you can remove that you can remove and eliminate the attachment what i mean those are the favorable sites now in situation where tumor cannot be the underlying bone cannot be eliminated like in the last webinar in the elkem webinar if you have seen i demonstrated one tumor which was attached to the walls of the sphenoid inside in and around the uh, on to the carotid canal optic canal everywhere that was again for the demonstration last one and i had to drill over the carotid and remove the underlying bone of the carotid canal keeping the periosteum intact to give that patient a cure and that is so difficult and we call it as unfavorable because it is not all that easy for everybody and every time so similarly this frontal sinus involvement is an unfavorable tumor particularly if it attached to the anterior wall suppose this tumor is attached to the we showed in one of the webinar if this tumor is attached to the anterior wall it is difficult to address endoscopically and then obviously you need to take the help of um, some outer approach like a minimal trephination or some sort of osteoplastic or whatever so unfavorable is the anterior wall attachment the overall frontal sinus involvement and the skull base involvement is unfavorable this could be attached to the skull base also here so that is unfavorable and because if you try to remove the skull base you have to be ready to resect the skull base and you may get a csf leak and ready to repair and uh, seal that as well so that makes the surgery more complex oh. chances of complication very high and that is called unfavorable so this tumor is unfavorable to me and that is the biggest challenge besides the challenge of invading the orbit yes sir so because it's unfavorable have you considered an open approach yes we have told the patient in case require we may do a trephination an additional port for instrumentation as well as the telescope insertion you know this i mean there are a couple of other challenges too yeah. a of course it's a very deep keros that should not be such a big problem but something to take note of and b i think it's anterior to the anterior ethmoidal but do we have a ct which can sort of show us as to the relation with the anterior ethmoidal yeah it is anterior to the anterior ethmoid for sure that is um, uh, hardly an issue because this is um, anterior to the anterior ethmoid and that doesn't matter i will coagulate the anterior ethmoid in case um, hmm. we need to transpose no, more it is yeah it is anterior if it is yeah, anterior so in, okay. even if it even if it is not i i may coagulate that that is something not a concern to uh, for the decision making as see this is anterior ethmoidal yes. and the tumor is far anterior to it yes no i mean if it's in the tumor then you get get into trouble so i mean it's yeah. it's separate from the tumor is and yes but so, since we are opening the orbit so it should not be a problem planning there perfectly yes. planned lovely yes. uh, so let's and, get on i uh, yeah let's get on with it because unfortunately and, the audience will move out for lunch unless you sort of show them some surgery yes. and the last concern that yes. you cannot rule out 100% in malignant transformation no so on mri it doesn't look like malignant transformation because wherever the malignant transformation is the center starts necroting and losing this uh, uh, you know lamellar pattern the ccp so it doesn't mm -hmm. look like turning into malignant but she is being lady approaching 60 and the location and the destruction of the wall to a different compartment 
all may go in favor of a malignant conversion. So that is a histopathological, you know, situation. In case it is, then it will require an additional treatment later on as well. But the chances for me, uh, my gut feeling is it has not trans uh, transformed into malignancy so far. Excellent. And what are we doing in terms of pre-op preparation? Pre-op, we have given her just antibiotic, nothing else. Hmm. Because for tumors, there is hardly anything for the, as far as like, unlike sinus surgery for preparation. But yes, hmm. we have given antibiotics for any additional inflammation which may have, uh, which may, be, may have been associated. And your anesthetic plan, what do we do for anesthesia? Do we use Steva? Do we use hypertensive? Do we use... Hypotensive, hypotensive, hypotensive anesthesia for this patient. For FES, we don't use hypotensive anymore these days. Normotensive with the less cardiac output by reduced heart rate. But yes, for tumors, always hypotensive anesthesia. This lady had been on anticoagulants as well earlier, which have been stopped a few days back. So though the PTINR, all those coagulation factors are normal, but that is again another concern as compared to the, you know, other cases. I may expect little more, I would say, additional bleeding. Okay. So, paradoxical middle turbinate there? Yes, paradoxical yeah. middle turbinate. Yes, sir. You have packed with Merosil initially and now with gauze pack, I see. Yeah. So, since this using, is not as... Yes, sir. We're using topical adrenaline, I'm sure. Yes, 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 sir. Since this is not a sinus disease... Mucociliary hmm. clearance is not the issue. No. Reduced local immunity in sinus disease, which is the issue, is not here. So I am not concerned with that and using, being a tumor, these uh, gauge packs, which are more efficient than the Merosel packs for overall, you know, yes. field. See this? So that's one in... 10,000, 1 in 1,000, 1 in 5,000? No, no, this is 1 in 4,000 for this particular patient. 1 in 4,000. So elderly patient had some uh, issues earlier. I don't know for what reason. She no, no, I think 1 in 1,000 can give problems. I agree. We tend to use 1 in 10,000, frankly, in our practice. Yeah. And now see, this is high deviation. Hmm. It... Though in this case, I am going to resect the middle tabinet partially. Hmm. Let's see how it works out. That will be. In the first case of sinus surgery, I had shown you a limited septoplasty. Mm. Uh, for the high deviation. You might need one here again, it seems, for access. Yes, yes, yes. It is a challenge, challenging patient. She's also on anticoagulants, you said. It. Yeah, earlier we have stopped a couple of days back. Mm. So I'm expecting a little extra bleeding so we are prepared with that now this is the tabinate and i have already told you i have we have already decided for a planned resection partial resection right anyway we are going to do the draft we need more you know extended approach to the orbit so this is going to go so that's the coagulator coming in and uh, of course coagulating the anterior end of the middle turbinate See, this coagulator yeah. helps in reducing the bleeding, mucosal mm -hmm. bleeding. And you're using coagulation mode now, I guess. Yeah. See some mass in the ethmoidal roof. Yes, we Coming of course. The model roof. We see the tumor prolapsing into the anterior ethmoidal area. Yeah. 
The patient's about 60, wasn't she? Patient's uh, age. Age? Hmm. Age is 60. Okay. I don't know. See, this is initial. That's a curved microdebrider blade you have there? Yeah, yeah. This is for initial, you know, this mucosal debridement. Or like. So every time uh, you can pack the same packs to for surface packing to reduce the bleeding. And they are yes. safe. We never, um, you know, sir, we never infiltrate in the nose for any reasons for the fear of systemic, you know, dissemination. Stop this years back. So the challenges are extra bleeding, elderly patient not using the pure adrenaline as a topical, mm. no infiltration. Yes, there are challenges, of course. It is, uh, we appreciate, we appreciate this is how difficult the patient it is that you have taken on. I mean, I think I can see the uncinate there and it seems to be, of course, medial to the uncinate and coming in out through the hiatus. It, the, the tumor seems to be prolapsing out through the hiatus. Hiatus semilunaris is prolapsing out through the hiatus. Sir. This is the tumor. Yes. And I'm taking this frozen uh, clip. So as I understand, uh, you are using a, uh, a two surgeon technique. See, you see a suction there. Yes. Someone else is holding the scope for you, or someone else is holding the suction for you? No, no. It is uh, me only who is holding the telescope right now. Right. But we may interchange in case required. See you this initial yes. tumor. I have taken sending for frozen first. Yes, I see that. So lovely. Frozen and we'll continue to work. And we'll get the report meantime, you know. Yes. Sir, we have here uh, round the clock frozen facilities available. Which is uh, remarkable. It's very nice. In house, eh? In house means we have, a, the... we have a tie up with the center. Yes. Gives us round the clock. And I have a habit of operating in the night, so it is a, you know, luxury for me. If it's your passion, that's what you do, day or night. Eh? <laughs> so this is the initial, um, you know, part of the excess so far. So I'll just recount what he has been doing so far, because some of you were away for lunch. But basically, he's clipped the anterior end of the middle turbinate. He's coagulated part of the septum, and uh, because there was a DNS, which is, uh, and uh, he's taken a part of the tumor, which is sent for frozen. And what you see out there is a little bit of the tumor in the roof of the middle meatus, and what you also see is the uncinate process. Now uncinate I will not be well seen. Yeah. Yeah. Now I'll carry on further. And are you the using zero degree scope? Pardon? You're using a zero degree scope, I guess. So far, zero degree. Whenever yes. I'll change, sir, I'll um, intimate. So now what he has done is that he is using the backbiting forcep to cut the uncinate at its middle segment in a retrograde fashion. And with the ball probe, that's the horizontal portion of the uncinate being medialized. And this and the ostium of the macular sinus coming into view. 
this is the middle metal entrosmy yes since we have to do an orbital work this middle metal entrosmy all is something which will keep me orienting so this okay. will prove to be a great landmark in this situation hmm public this middle metal entrosmy will serve as a great landmark yeah it tells you where you can anticipate the floor of the orbit and uh, i notice that you like the curved micro dip rider you haven't even started with a straight micro dip rider which is nice so, sir hmm. so that is your maxillary sinus yes and now i am taking away this upper part of the ancinate with a dip rider only hmm lovely to get on to the lamina papyracea hmm see this is very close to the lamina that is the mass yes the tumor you are being removed by a micro dip rider as you moves up yeah to get more space See, this is what the the mass Reaching which is the frontal recess because yeah, as you know the bulla is still intact in fact you seem to be getting rid of the supra bulla recess yeah so it was just prolapsing down hmm not attached anywhere here hmm see in papilloma mass we have to keep an eye on the attachment whatever luminal component which is prolapse you can just dip right that has no value hmm but the attachment has significant value i just said if you are to not leave behind a residual you have to find the attachment and remove it so you think you're on the lamina papyracea there where you are using yeah, this the is, uh, this on the mucosa and i can see it papery yeah, this, this, this is it, lamina this is lamina only it feels like the lamina ah yeah 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 you can see the bulletment even lamina you can see on bulletment even see this lamina yeah so that's the wall of paper or the lamina papyracea which we saw and the anterior ethmoidal should not be very far away anterior ethmoidal is at the roof so i am i am still away from it's that it's behind the tumor so as long as you see yeah. the tumor obviously you know it won't be there but there seems to be a supra well hmm. yeah so give me a pack see this hmm this is my bulla ethmoidalis okay this extra bleeding i am anticipating in this case and Naive. we will handle it our own way given the circumstances i think it's not bad at all yeah i mean the patient has been on anticoagulants and uh, the age of the patient which uh, certainly limits how much they can do in terms of anesthesia to limit the bleeding now i will acquire some more space straight dip rider hmm wash straight wash wash straight and remove this bulla to get more space yes once i get full exposure i will control the bleeding then efficiently meantime once you remove the bulla you can get behind the tumor and possibly access the anterior ethmoid which might actually be the uh, with the the supply to this tumor and that might make a job quite simple so this lamina now much better yes so that's the bulla coming off and you can see the lamina papyracea yeah. laterally bulla comes off yes so i am removing all this to improve my exposure hmm so this is some this is only mucosa this is not tumor in the bulla yeah no? this, this is not tumor tumor is this. not anywhere lower down hmm hmm tumor is no. coming from above Yes. So that's the bulla coming out. Yep. Yeah, I am in the posterior moid directly. Yes. Which is so all. I want not. more and more space. Hmm. And immediately after that, I will remove this to do a draft to marsupialize the frontal. Hmm. So you basically want to get at the skull base posteriorly and then come forward. That's the strategy you seem to have there. Yes, that is the skull base behind. Hmm. 
Lovely. Beautiful. See the lower part of the ethmoids, everything clear? Yes, perfect. Lovely. There's nothing, but... So you see the lamina papyracea on your left. You see, at about 9 o'clock, you see the lamina papyracea. At about 11, 12 o'clock, you see the skull base and the posterior ethmoids. And now he's coming forward. And we okay, can anticipate then. that he will soon see the anterior ethmoidal artery. Most of the report. Lovely operation, Satish. I hope the picture is good. Yes, yes, yes. Lovely. Now see this axilla. I am taking off. See yeah. all this axilla I am opening up. Yes, yes, okay. The axilla... And my area of interest is above. Hmm. See this necrotic component coming? As my right. frontal recess is little widened. Right. You're still using a zero degree, of course. Yes, but so far zero degree. Yes. Because yeah, we aren't that far anterior anyway. So it's Somewhere here, we should see the anterior ethmoidal artery, I would believe, where you're working. He's, he's exploring carefully. He's careful here for the obvious reason. See, this is all frontal recess, but yes. no tumor is attached. So far, it is all prolapsing into it. Only prolapsing. I love that. Yes. This is the mucosa. See, behind the frontal recess, is it? See, the this mucosa I'm taking to give me a good plane. I see that. Yes. That is Lovely. the region of the anterior See, anterior is there. Yeah, that is anterior ethmoidal artery. That's yes. And it's a... See, and I am working far anterior to it. Yes. This is all tumor. But do you want to bust the anterior ethmoidal? I'm just asking. I'm not See, this is all tumor. I tumor in have. the superior part of the orbit. See this? Yes, I see that. But I will not remove from here. I will get a more exposure by means of a drop and then mm. do something like see this. All frontal research is clear. Okay. Denuding and it's lovely. See from lower down up, there's no tumor lower down. The frontal research is widened itself by the tumor. Agreed. See about this frontal research is widened this above by the tumor. A bit. The anterior ethmoidal artery? The anterior ethmoidal artery is there behind. Yes. See this, yeah. Hurting up. Yeah. Mm. See, this is anterior ethmoidal artery. Hmm. And it is quite behind, see, above the tumor, which I don't want to remove right now. I'll mark supervise this part of the sinus so that I can remove head on. Okay. Under vision, head on. Perfect. Knowing the fact that even a slightest of the bit of the tumor, if it is left behind, it is going to come back. And those recurrent tumors, she is already 60, recurrent tumors in elderly are more likely to undergo malignant change than the primary tumors and young patients. So we have to be so you are extra careful. Hemostasis, eh? I, I would agree with that. You're packing and, to get some and more than that, another uh, information, this right. lady is a smoker. Okay. Because if you analyze the malignancy, one of the strongest points in inverted papilloma turning to malignancy, the smoking mm. is one of the biggest factors. Yes. See this? Now I'm packing this cavity for a while. See this? That's nice. I'm yes. packing this cavity for a while until I do a draft. Okay. So that will take care of my oozing and everything. See this? Yep. Now the field will be good. Stop there. This will automatically in meantime will make the field very good. This part I have done quickly as it is 
so this is your uh, middle meters of course yeah the the the, the maxillary sinus ostium and the maxillary sinus that you can see there middle and meter and trust me this is lamina papyracea for your orientation the mm-hmm. frontal recess tumor which has been you know we have little bit debrided and the rest of the ethmoidal cavity is absolutely clear see that perfect very nice so this part i intentionally did fast to reduce the overall you know bleeding and unnecessary time you can save time in less important areas and spend on more critical areas so you want to do a transeptal now you want to no 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 transeptal i will first go up and then right. do a draft you want to do a draft too yes so, i mean we already have a draft one from the from the lamina yes. papyracea to the middle turbinate you have already exposed yes. this area so now for my draft two i will show you the steps it's very straight forward surgery very surgery in the safe region if you follow the landmarks so what mm-hmm. i am doing using the coblator i am you know i will sacrifice this mucoperiosteum hmm on the beak okay till the roof of the nose and coming a centimeter anterior to the axilla see this so basically the origin of the middle turbinate is coming anterior to it which yes. is where you expect the agar nasi cells and the tumor was there and he is coming on the lateral wall anterior to the middle turbinate attachment 1 cm anterior and from here you will enter the agar nasi yeah now see this is roughly my area of interest hmm. and i'll expose this bone by removing this mucoperiosteum see this yes now i'm using the cutting mode okay see so you coagulated and to remove the mucoperiosteum you're using this first i coagulated to hmm. to reduce cutting the bleeding mode. yes now i am removing this mucoperiosteum see the roof level hmm and the uppermost part of the septum as well okay see anterior is the safest region the anterior to the middle an- turbinate is very safe of course there can't be any olfactory cells anterior to the yeah and before that i start i will show you my posterior limit until that i can play around like anything the hmm. posterior limit is the beginning of the olfactory area hmm. and that is demarcated by the certain landmarks which i am going to share with you and show you the brighter so you can see Let the middle turbinate you. there you can see that he has coagulated with the with the with the coagulation and you can see that the lateral wall of the, the nose anterior to the middle turbinate attachment has been removed the mucosa has been removed and now he is using the micro debrider again removing more mucosa on the septum see this yes can you see something coming this see is the not all factory neuron factory. you see the first olfactory neuron oh, there that, that was not olfactory neuron that was the branch of ethmoidal artery and now no no this lateral yeah. opening anteriorly is a yes. branch of ethmoidal artery and now and okay. now as you go behind yes now, see this the medial opening this medial opening that is the region of the olfactory fibers coming out can you see nicely, you have very nicely elevated the mucosa circumferentially or let me say in a, to uh, to be able to make this elevation see this and that is going to be the region of my posterior limit see that yep yes so this is how i will uh, direct my um, you know coblator anterior to that i can play around like anything without any you know fear my limits will be skin all around anteriorly okay see this bleeding coming from the bone never try to use coagulator over that otherwise it will ruin the vent so i say it again bleeding from the bone you see uh, never try to use the coagulator otherwise it will ruin the titanium tip of the vent okay you should not use coagulator on the bone if you are bony bleeding either i will use a mono monopolar such you know insulated monopolar or you can use a dry diamond see this insulated monopolar 
because yeah. this is the safe zone. I can use monopolar here. See this? This is beak only. Yes, we see that. So you have controlled the bleeding yeah. on the bone. Because I am not on the skull base, so I can use like this. Okay? Yep, lovely. I'm sort of all this. See now, the bone to be removed is being exposed. Draft is always, almost every day, a part of our OT list. So we have our fixed step for the draft. Okay. Now see, this bone, imagine, the moment you remove this bone, the entire frontal sinus will be marsupialized. I am I am working all the time with a zero degree only. For that matter, I have not changed the telescope yet since beginning. Can you see but this, now, uh, the beak, which is the obstacle? The frontal that. sinus is behind this beak. Once we drill this beak, our frontal sinus will be uncovered. So this surgery is like marsupialization, after which the frontal sinus will directly drain into the nasal cavity. See this? Yeah. Now, the surgical, yes. See now, this is the frontal nasal process. Do we have a pointer? Mm -hmm. Yep, so now you got your drill. And This uh, is my favorite Metronic Stylus 15 degree coarse diamond. See this? Yes. The 15 degree angle drill, coarse diamond drill. Coarse diamond. See this? Coarse diamond? It has irrigation system. See now, I have started on the frontal, frontal nasal process. Now the first part is for everybody, for junior colleagues, first part is to define my lateral limit. See, I have started anterior to the axilla. See this? Yes. And I, first I will define my lateral limit as I drill through the thickness of this bone. You will find the outside periosteum coming in picture as a change of color. I will show that. So he's drilling in this area and the idea is to drill right till the laterally till the skin. We are now anterior to the lamina papyracea. Yes, anterior now above the lamina. Hmm. And soon you are going to appreciate the change of color. See this change of color. See the change in color. Yeah, give me that coblator to remove this and to show you. See the change of color? Yes, we see. We can actually see the bones very thin. So that is my anterior limit, my uh, lateral limit. Lovely. Hmm? Yep, we see, we see now, very thinned out bone. Just like we see in otology when we get very close to the dural plate, the very similar appearance you see here as the bone I is... I am running thin. this drill at a speed of 60,000 RPM. Lovely. And this is diamond burst. So safe. Yeah. Now see, keeping this lateral limit, keep on removing the entire bone medial to it. And keep on going at the same time laterally, anteriorly. This operation is being done in the safest zone of the nasal cavity. So the because only thing is you have to define the posterior limit. Hmm. In the lateral limit, even if you worse to worse, go through this lateral limit, you can give a button hole, you can suture. See this lateral limit? Yes, we see. This is outside periosteum. Yes, we can see that. See this, see this ballotment from outside? Yep, you can see you pressing there. Yes. The so place. follow we this and keep going there. anteriorly. And going superiorly, yes. Yes. So now you're so far forward that you're not worried about the dura at all. And you can just keep going up and up. Yeah, yeah. So I'm you're going more and more away deep. from the dura. You're anterior to the frontal sinus ostium. Yes. All you have to do is to keep going up and up and you will enter the frontal sinus. Yeah, so what I was saying, those junior colleagues, this is the safest zone where I'm operating now. Hmm. 
Don't think draft is a difficult procedure. Only thing is you have to orient. You have to have a good drill. Practice on cadavers a few times. You continue to work with the zero degree? Yes, always. The entire surgery will be done with zero degree only. Uh, because I tend to take an angle scope at this point. I will show inside <laughs> if needed with angle scope. Yes. Lovely. The beauty of this course, Diamond, is it cuts like butter. See this? Yes. So, a coarse diamond burr, because it cuts well and it doesn't bleed. It doesn't damage the, the soft. The best thing is it is so safe. Hmm. So it stays anterior to the posterior limit that we had defined. Kasi are you using? Let give me a cobblator. Kasi are you? Okay. See, Beautiful. we are doing everything with zero degree only. Hmm. And you have this pack posteriorly where the frontal recess was. Yes. So you know you're limit. anterior to it. You know you're anterior to it. That itself is a posterior limit. That's a guide. Again. My lateral limit is in view. So, so just when we were sort of ages ago, we were doing external ethmoidectomy, we were told to stay lateral. Uh, similarly, now when we sort of come in this area, we stay lateral because lateral is safe. Lateral is safe. You can see the skin of the, uh, of the nasal. You, you can see the skin of the medial canthal area. And as you go forward and you stay lateral, you are safe because, of course, the cribrium of plate is medial. See, I'm drilling this it more than a centimeter thick turbinate. Yes. This is lateral to middle turbinate and he is anterior to the first olfactory neuron that we had identified. He is anterior to the frontal recess. So ev everything is safe. What? See this frontal inside? Yes, yes. We can now see the tumor again coming through as you go higher and higher. And my anterior, this way I will come anteriorly to the anterior skin. Would be my limit. Say it again, sorry. I will come anteriorly until I reach the anterior skin. Yes, yes. That will be my limit. Now, anterior to the middle terminate, I am turning laterally as well. He's entering the frontal sinus. Now, and you can see tumor as he goes up. You can see a little bit of tumor coming through. Let me orient you. Suction. See this? This is the middle terminate attachment there. See this? Yep. I have removed this entire beak. And see, I am in the frontal sinus proper. Perfect. Lovely. See this? Yes. And again, you seem to have tumor which is unattached. I mean, you yes. see the frontal sinus mucosa and tumor filling the yeah, frontal give me, sinus. Give me the, uh, 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 so that's good divider. news. 40, give me red 40. Yeah, give me cobblator first to improve. So I am in the frontal proper. I have to drill a lot of, still a lot of bone to improve my field. Lovely operation. What a tool cobblator is. Mm. Now see. 
that is your frontal can you see that yes, is sir. the turbinate that is the attachment of the turbinate here middle turbinate attachment agreed and i am anterior to the attachment of the turbinate yes in the true frontal sinus that is mucosa Basically, incipited secretions. Is it secretions or tumor? Yeah, this is incipited secretions. Okay. Okay. Give me That's seventy good. degree to show you the depth, because mm. still a lot of you know cloud section there. A bone has to go. These secretions are not the pink tumor that we had seen before. These are more creamy yellow. See yes. the secretions. Yes. Does it seem like allergic fungus? Uh, no, doesn't look it. It's it just because of the blocked access. Hmm. Block. Block. See this? Yes. Will you send this wash, pathology too? Wash, give me, give me a wash to flush them. And sometimes I use hydro debrider in the frontal recess. Sometimes you have an incipited secretion, allergic fungus, or something like that. I don't. See, there's a lot of material. Yes, so you're washing it out, and all of this debris is coming out. Yes, to give me better orientation. See Good all news, these debris. Good news for the patient that uh, it's not a tumor but debris. Is this all debris? Yes, which is good news. Yes. Now look at the. What up? Done. What up? See this. Yes, this is the material which is lodged in the orbital roof. See this; it is lifting off, which is nice. Yes. Are you pressing the orbit to mobilize it? You don't need to. Yeah, yeah, I will see. See now the inside of the frontal sinus, the posterior. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Let me widen it first. Give me the drill. Zero degree. Back to zero degree. I hope the picture was good. Lovely. The world has come to expect very high standards from you, and we are living up to those standards. So everything is perfect. All your blessings, sir. Not me. I am your ardent follower. Now, once you do a draft, try to yes. complete it to prevent post-operative issues. Yes. Oscar because though it looks so good now, you must realize that all of it is denuded bare bone, uh, which will obviously go in. Upper part of the septum. Yes, so now he's drilling. I see, I see my olfactory neuron are there behind. See this? Yes. So I so can still is... trim this bone as well. Uh, so anteriorly is safe. Yes, good. To give it, to give it maximum widening. Hmm. This is the upper part of the septum, which is the thickest part. So the mid, the medial part is drilling now anteriorly, and he's sort of connecting it to the septum. Yeah, and this is the anterior part further. Hmm. This I will go until I get the anterior skin. See this? No. See this is skin? It's yes, starting yes. anteriorly. Yes, we see that skin. The brownish tinge, pinkish tinge that we see there. 
the periosteum really yes so dr jain said a very important thing he said once you have gone down this road you have to complete it because obviously there will be a repetitive reaction and there will be granulations so if you have gone down and drilled it in this way without mucosal preservation because this is not a mucosal preservation technique then you have to make a really wide opening if you were doing a mucosal preservation technique then of course you can get away with small openings relatively small openings See the frontal with zero degree. Hmm, I am impressed. Yes, zero degree and he's gone so far. See the skin turning anteriorly. Yes, a little bit of bleeding as the skin uh, is bleeding as he is drilling through the bone. See the frontal sinus. Lovely, beautiful. With a zero degree. Now yep. all this bone medially I will remove. Now I need to go about the level of the orbit. Okay. Yes. Not only this, but the lamina, I will drill away. See the periorbita? Yes, so he's thinned the bone, so thin that it's becoming papery now. Beautiful. Is this bone completely gone here? Yes. No, yes. no bone? No bone. You can press from outside too so that we can see that. Yeah, yeah. I will let me clean now the field. I, I see I went off so fast. See this? The draft yes. finished in 10 minutes by and large. <laughs> Lovely. And this is thanks to this drill. Yes, the coblation, the drill, the anesthesia, all the new advances that we have had over the years. Wonders. Wash, wash. So important to have the right instruments. So you will notice that all the instruments that he is using are curved instruments. So that's posterior thyroid again, maxillary sinus. As you can see, lateral wall is now not bony, but soft tissue because it's removed all the bone on the lateral wall. Yeah. See my, still the gauge piece is there. Hmm. So as I understand, uh, uh, suction is in your hand? Yes. At the moment, suction... My assistant is giving yes. irrigation. Right. And sometimes but needing a second suction. Yes. And your assistant standing behind you or on the opposite side? Yes, besides me. Besides you, behind you. Yes. yes. See now with a zero degree. And yes. This is another gauge piece we have packed. See that? Yep. Now. Give the brighter. Give the brighter. We'll show you some interesting finding after this. If I take the 70 degree, a little bit trimming of the turbinate, which is unnecessary. Okay. See now, this is the orbital wall. Yes. Laterally on the left at about nine. That is the orbital wall. Yes. And this is my entry model. And you know, to retract this, That's the I will I will coagulate this entry model there. Yes, I think that. Uh... Without any issue, sir. Sir, no suction, sir. That's the vibe. No. So that's the monopolar. Here, I remove the bone from the anterior portal artery. Anterior portal. Yes. Mm -hmm. 
carburetors. See, I remove the bone from over the model artery. This yes. one, very yes. clear. Beautiful. And you can see it going into the orbital periosteum and the orbital fat, the anterior ethmoidal artery. Uh, this is a small, tiny vessel. It is. I agree. See this? Yes, there might be something. Uh, and it. I have cut it. See this? I have cut it. There might be another artery behind this, where your other instrument is. Your no, no not artery. Here, this area. That's a now. Okay. See now, this area is so now separated. The orbit medial to the lamina papyracea. Yeah, yeah. So I need to go to retract that and remove that now. If I retract, cut the anterior thermodal artery. See that? Mm -hmm. I have more leverage now to play with the periorbita. Yeah, Otherwise, it will stretch on the periorbita and sometime would retract. Okay. Lovely. See, this is Lamina. Now I am coming with a 70 degree. Boss, back for a while. Back for a while. Just back for a while to improve the field and then uh, we'll come with a 70 degree for the last part. This leg is bullos. Bada jana pura. Bada jana pack ke. Cold sex. Sab chiz cold le le. Wash karna, cobletor. So Satish, you were just asking if your colleagues in pathology have had a chance to look at. Pardon, sir? I said, if your colleagues in pathology have had a chance to look at what uh, this tissue that you sent out uh, initially. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm waiting for the report. Hmm. Let's see. So he's coming anteriorly again. Yeah, I'm just improving the field hmm. a little bit more. Using the coplation to control the oozing. Okay, by and large, okay. One dollar, point out. See, now the field is much better. Hmm. Maxillary sinus is sucking, just to orient you again. Septum very scoplating now. Yes. This irrigation is an important tool to wash out the staining. See this? Lovely. Field is so much better. 70. So now I'm taking 70. Periosteum. Okay. Still a little bit of debris, I think, in the frontal, posteriorly. 
See now is the picture with the seventy degree. Yes, we can see. And it's seventy. And see what is there. See with seventy. This is lamina papyracea. Yep, lovely. This is above in the yeah. roof. See this. All yes. this disease. Still a fair bit there. Yes. Now I am above the orbit. See this. Now you basically it doesn't seem attached to periosteum or anything. It's just coming off. Uh, yeah, with the section. See this. Lovely. Beautiful. See this massive region. So we have been lucky today because it's not attached anywhere. Yeah, it is underneath. Yes, because you can actually see the mucosa underneath it, which is quite yeah. reserved. Those are of the front planus is well reserved. Our section, I have always emphasized on the good, powerful section when you use mm -hmm. the shavers and these tools. I would test for fungus too, even though it doesn't see there's so much debris, even though radiologically it wasn't typical. But the kind of see debris. The, that, see uh, the frontal sinus. Yes, lovely. Absolutely clear. Yeah, this is the mass. Now you have mass, I agree. Yes. See all these debris coming off the orbital periosteum. Hmm. See this? Yes, we see, of course. Lovely. I would like to make a small announcement. Mm -hmm. All the postgraduates are requested to move towards their posters as we're about to begin with a poster presentation soon. I repeat, all the postgraduates are requested to move towards your posters as we're about to begin with a poster presentation. Thank you. See this lesion now? We see the mass now. It's obviously different from the debris that we were seeing then. So there were some inspissated debris behind the mass, but now that the debris has come out, you see again the fleshy mass. Uh, it would be interesting to see what the pathology is. Let's see. It's obviously PNS pathology is not easy to do even for the pathologist because there's such a variety of pathologies here. It's not just squamous cell cancer or not. See this, the area of attachment. Can you see this? I see that, uh, that the mucosa seems to be involved or infiltrated on the lateral surface. See the area of attachment there. Hmm. And the underlying. Can you see? Board. Yes, we see that. That's the posterior table. Hmm. Perhaps it's the area where on the MR we sort of no, found it. No, no. Oh, the now I am removing with the debrider little bit of the bulk which is left. This is attached to the posterior table. See this? Yes, yes, we see that. So certainly a little bit of the bone of the posterior table doesn't seem fully healthy. See this, this mass which is... Yes, going into your micro Jumping into the blade. Hmm. Ah. Grossly came out. Very challenging yes. operation, but very well done. Beautifully done. So the way. Now see. So what about that bleeder? You're going to drill or just wait? Yes, yes, definitely. Let me first. Uh... Let me first show you. See, that is the mass which is attached to here. Yes. That is what we expected. And see, wherever the mass is, you will find the vessel. See this? Yes. So a little bit uh, unhealthy. See this, see this dura. Of... See this dura there? Is it dura? Okay. Posterior so... table dura, this one? Yes, yes. So this is the point where we probably thought that the Bone was a little bit eroded. That is that point then. Yes. Hmm. 
Now let me improve the field again to orient hmm. you. I have seen. Wash, wash. Section. Wash section. Wash section. You must realize that it's using a seventy degree scope, so it can be very disorienting to use a seventy degree scope. But he's yeah. doing it so well. That's why I will reorient you again. I have seen the area of interest. So this is anterior now. I'm showing it to you. The twelve o'clock is anterior. And see, if I go up, I will show you the orbital roof. Let me remove this uh, gauge piece first again. The remaining one to reorient you. See this? Yes. Wash, wash. So now you are sucking on the roof of the orbit, so to say, where the yes. So now first I will see the roof of the orbit, where mm -hmm. it was to me so far looking like not attached to. It was prolapsing there. It picked up. Yes, it sort of was picked out very easily. It you is attached to the posterior table, table yeah. we have seen. Yes, and we'll do something radical to it. The the brother. So this is in the frontal sinus, fairly posterior. He's using a seventy-degree scope. Section. And now I will go seventy degree up, hmm. up above the orbit, and then turn it down to show you the roof of the orbit. Hmm. And even laterally, we need to see what's happening laterally. Yes. Yes. It was a quite a well limited, going very lateral. Hmm. See this. Yes, what is very nice to see is that the mucosa of the frontal sinus is very well preserved. Now see, that hmm. is the roof of the orbit. See from above, yes. and we can I see that the floor is nice, clear, clear. Very nice. See, I have gone above the orbit and turned yes, my telescope upside down. Can you see this? To explain to everyone, he's put his seventy degree scope, then rotated it around so that he can look into everything. This is the corner. roof of the orbit. Yes, this and we can the see the attachment side. The bone was decent. No tumor. Hmm. See, this is the periorbital intact. Yes, we we appreciate that. And see, yeah. I have turned my scope upside down to show you the roof. We see that and appreciate that. See, there is nothing in the orbital roof now. Agreed? Beautiful, man. and now that is the leading area. area. This. Now, area of interest is this. Hmm. Where the tumor was attached to, and we'll do something to it now. Okay. Lovely. For later, first. See one area, we are little bit of the, you know, region of the periosteum which came in section. So I will coagulate this. So this is the orbital area that is coagulating yeah. currently, which is at nine o'clock. Almost See, separating from rest of the tumor. Hmm. Because this is intact. See, it has nothing to do with tumor. No, I mean we appreciate that this is normal mucosa. It's just the point of attachment where it is bleeding, where you have a little bit of a. That is coming from above. Hmm. The floor is perfect. So you are you are holding the scope? Yeah, it is me only. Because I am turning it again and again everywhere, hmm. so that control I have to have. So my compliments to your uh, assistant, doing wonderfully well in getting that suction in yeah. to follow wherever you go. Yeah, he is my the dear one who has been with me for last twenty years. Hmm, lovely. Assisted me in thousands and thousands of surgeries. That's why I always. Um, Mention whenever we talk about the skull base to make a team. See this orbital periosteum. Hmm. See that. See this. 
Away. It is away. I think you have very convincingly shown us that you have excised disease very well. I will um, drill this bone. It is Winter. nice to see there is so much preserved mucosa. Whatever the, bone I have exposed this after elevating this, see this. The bone see the, I will drill to stay on the safer side. See this bone? Yes. So the now orbit is the, away from our field now. See this. So that seems to be the floor of the orbit that you so little yeah, bit. Yeah, see now the floor. See the periorbita yeah. below. Yes, and we can see, see you. The rest of the orbit field. is away. We can orbit see that. Orbit is now absolutely away from my field. Yes. So that is the floor of the frontal bone. A little bit that is still in the left. The floor of the frontal sinus yes. on the medial side that is still left. And then we'll of do something the to rest it. of the frontal sinus. You can see much of it is mucosalized, which is very, very good news. But you can also see that much of it is bereft of mucosa, which is a bit dangerous because it will obviously scar and maybe... And now, my goal is to drill away, coagulate away the final attachments, you know? Yes. This is tumor coming out of the bone here. See, this is... Hmm. And you can feel that the bone is decent there. Yes. Hmm. Yes, all this looks so normal now. It's only that area in the dura where we seem to have some concern. Yeah, see, I'm removing. It has been in the recent studies proven that when you drill away, uh, this remove the papilloma from the bone or anywhere, take five millimeter margin of the mucosa because sometimes you have a okay. you know, mucosal contamination. See this. Yes, so we see that you have taken your margin. Yes, that is important. You can see the bleeder in the bone. Now see the entire area. The area of interest is in our view. Lovely. This that's a that's the dura. Hmm. See this dura. Hmm. Dura is there because the bone is decent. So coplating on the surface of the dura very lightly. Yeah, he's yeah, staying dura is away, as you say, he's not really hugging the dura, he's staying a little bit away and trying to get away with minimal coagulation. Just to see work this bone, it. this bone from here to here, that is the site of attachment. See this bone? We are convinced. Hyper osteotic bone. Yes. The drill. And now is the time. See where we have to reach out. See this area. And this yeah. could have been possible only because of this draft. Agreed. So we just lost the picture. We are back. We got the picture. See this. This is the culprit bone. See what I'm doing. Yes, we can see the bleeder in the bone and we can see yeah. the... Ah, the bleeder the, in the bone the, is the bone where the, the tumor diamond is. Uh, controlling that bleeder, attempting to control that bleeder. Keep an eye, close eye. I will completely eliminate this bone. Hmm. Very nicely. Beautifully done. So he's removing this bone to expose the dura because his concern is that this is the site of attachment. And if he leaves it here, then of course the chances of recurrence may come back. It's bound to come back. But it is the beauty of his skill and the beauty of the safe instruments that we have that he's able to do this so effectively. For later, see the bone I have drilled. Bone you have drilled, just a little bit of bleeding from the dura. Yeah, yeah, that's from the dura. Bleeder. See the underlying dura. That is from underlying dura. Hmm. 
and it's amazing to see that your suction follows you. Lovely. Hey, this is all Dura. Hmm. And you have managed to control the blade quite effectively. One side still there. Hmm. See now this remaining bone. Yes. That's actually the roof of the orbit, the little that is left of it. Yeah, that bone yeah. was not looking good. Hmm. See the flash bone now? Yes, we see that. Section. Oh. Section. See this bad bone? Lovely. Section. Ultra point all See this entire bone. Yes. So as it drills it away with this coarse diamond burr, you find that it stops to bleed because that's the. See this bone now. It all looks very healthy. All looks healthy, but I, still I'm I, not. The bleeder yeah. on the dura is almost controlled. I mean, still a small loose, but nothing very major. Uh, that that is not an issue. And yeah, the that's issue is this issue. bone. I have little bit doubt on this bone. Bone. This bone. Yeah, okay. little bit. Hmm. See, this, see this bone. See this. this okay. One. Looks good, but I don't want to leave it. See, everything being done with a diamond bar. I am Maybe. far lateral and above the orbit to do all this. Yeah, this is more than Using 70 degree, hmm. all angle instruments, under vision. See this bone? Yes, it's very nice. Though it looks good, but I don't want to leave it on the safer side. You're being extra careful by drilling away all that bone on the margin. And doesn't particularly seem like it's uh, grossly pathological, but you're being careful and certainly we should be. Wash. Or. Yes. Now give me the wash. First give me a cobblator and then give me a wash. See this entire area? Yes, we see that. We see it very well. This is the area where the tumor was attached to. Cobblator. I will show you after cleaning everything. Do check if the pathologist, can someone in your team do check as to uh, if the pathologist has an opinion. I am well aware that it will be difficult for the pathologist because there's so many different kinds of tumors in the in the PNS, but if he has uh, got an opinion, then of course it would be nice to know.
the bleeder seems to be the inferior edge uh, of the bony bony defect so to say wash give me wash and see now what i i am trying to show with this wash see now yeah see now the underlying bone we see the underlying bone we see the underlying dura too where the bone's been uh, yeah and see the bone the entire bone is like has this. been drilled away give me give me give me retractor let me we show you once the, again we generally so get the impression that we have done all that like, done see this nature of suction ek suction nature of suction See the dura. Yes, we do that. Suction, Bharat. Suction. Down, down, down. See. Look, one to down. Keep. Other one up. Keep. Now, let's try this. See this. See, there's no tumor at all. Can you see? I was little extra cautious. No harm, but it's okay, nice. Yeah, cool yeah. Let me show you once again. Oh. So once you're done, we'll see it again with a zero degree to see what the anatomy is like and revise it. Yeah, yeah. I will show you that later. Let me first see this later. Okay. Yeah. Now see the area of attachment. Yes, I mean you have removed most of the area of attachment. See while this we see totally. Hmm. See this. Yes. See the skull base. How the thick bone was there, and been completely removed. See the posterior table. We see the where posterior. The, table. Yeah. See this entire region where the tumor was attached to. Beautifully done. Was see now the underlying too. bone. This bone, which was thick, left bone, I have completely drilled out. See this? Yes. There seems That's to be one on the bone good. still posteriorly of the mucosa. Yeah, where you have your coplater. Touch कर दे. Some mucosa loose. Okay. So that's the final picture from above. See that? Very nice. No tumor. Look at the frontal sinus. See the tumor attachment there. This was the area of interest. Very nice, Dr. Jain. Very nice, Satish. It looks lovely. You seem to have done a wonderful, wonderful job there. I mean, everybody is greatly appreciative of. How this is done. beautiful operation done. Thanks, Great sir. And your, uh, Good your for the patient. Has made it much better and more interesting. Your every single word was, you know. No, I have enjoyed good. this. It's been a long, long time since I've actually sort of uh, run through a sur surgery like this. Uh, or no, your, but I've enjoyed. Your tips and your points were really, you know, useful. Every single suggestion was important because it was coming. So now the seventy degree, and you can see the maxillary sinus ostium down there. You can see the ethmoidal roof there. See with zero see degree everything. Sinus. See the tumor attachment area with zero degree. Perfect. And some, uh, you know, mucosa. Maxillary sinus ostium, posterior ethmoids. Skull base coming forward. This is where the anterior ethmoidal was. Just anterior to it, you see the frontal sinus taking off. You yeah. see the table of frontal sinus. Since I told you that we hmm. may have to retract the orbit in those situations, we may have to, hmm. you know, cut off the anterior ethmoidal artery. So you see, have done. If, yes. we, if we are retracting the orbit like this. Uh, much more. See how much we have retracted. See the posterior wall. We see that. Lovely. See the superior wall, posterior wall, everywhere. So, this hmm. tends the anterior ethmoidal artery. 
So it is better to cut it in a plant way than yeah. allow it to transit. And allowed, yes, that has allowed you to retract the orbit medially. See, this has allowed us to retract. See, I am yes. in the orbital roof. See there? Yes, yes. About yes. the frontal no. sinus, this entire area has been marsupialized. So actually, the frontal sinus floor is there where I'm trying to. I have a pointer here where I showed them the frontal sinus roof, the frontal sinus floor. And yes, you could push the periosteum much below that. So that's the final picture. Yes, we are done. I mean, absolutely wonderful operation. Accomplished in very quick, very quick time. Lovely. Excellent Thank operation. You. Any Thank thoughts, you. questions for Dr. Any, any questions for Dr. Satish Chen? Any comments? You have a mesmerized audience. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So any questions, my associate will, um, you know, close it. Okay, lovely Satish, thank you so much. We uh, love it. Thanks to you, sir, for your presence has really made it more, uh, you know, informative, interesting, and your every word was encouraging. So great day for you. We have loved it. I don't think there's much more from Dr. Jain there or is there? Hmm. So any questions or anything before we move on? No, Satish, no questions. It's uh, all sort of gone to plan. Everything uh, was pretty obvious. Yes, everything. <laughs> so the next uh, last case, because three o'clock is there. Four o'clock till four, we have a session. I have a flight six o'clock. So will be the last case now coming up. And where are you off to Satish? Thank you, Dr. Satish. You indeed have us mesmerized with your surgical skills. Okay. To present a certificate to the chairs, I invite Dr. Jadavedan, senior okay. ENT surgeon, Trishur. Karo. To present a certificate of appreciation to our chairs. So, Dr. Satish, I'll be taking off now saying thank you. We love that operation. And we'll have another uh, pair of people take you through the next operation. Thank you, sir. Thank you so right. much. Pleasure. Lovely. Yes. Is this am I right, huh? Two patients are. One day, come on. Bujo for that work. Is key. What to carry with? I would now like to invite the chairs for the next surgery. Dr. Anand, Director and Head of ENT at MCV Memorial ENT Trust Hospital, Tamil Nadu. And Dr. Idikula Matthew, Senior ENT Consultant, Lakeshore Hospital, Arnakula. Respected Chairs, please take your seats on the dais. I would like to make an announcement. The meeting of the government body is postponed to 8 a.m. tomorrow in Hall A. The meeting for the gov governing body is postponed to tomorrow morning 8 a.m. in Hall A. The Kerala Skull Base Osteomyelitis Group Meeting will be held at 9.45 a.m. tomorrow at Hall B. The Kerala Skull Base Osteomyelitis Group Meeting will be held tomorrow in Hall B at 9.45 a.m. A gentle reminder to all the postgraduates, the poster presentation is about to begin soon. I request all the postgraduates to be near your posters.
Good evening, uh, Dr. Satish. We are ready here. Once you are ready, you can start the program. I think you have a case of rhinosporidiosis. Now. A gentle reminder to the delegates, please do not lose your QR coded tags as they're needed at food counters, welcome dinner, and also at the banquet counters. Evaluation forms are to be filled and submitted to the registration counters. Certificates are issued against submission of these forms only, and this is a requirement of NMC. Dear delegates, please do not lose your QR coded tags as they are needed for food counters, welcome dinner, and also the banquet counters. Evaluation forms are to be filled and submitted to the registration counters. Certificates are issued against submission of these forms only. This is a requirement of the NMC. Thank you. Dr. Satish, we are Hello. ready here. Hello. Hello, sir. Hello, sir. Hello. Hello, this is the auditorium. Can you hear us? Yes, 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 please. Yes, sir. This is uh, Dr. Anand. I'm so happy to see you work now for the next case. I think it's a case of rhinosporidium. So I think if you can give us a preliminary on that case, we'll hear it and then we'll go for the surgery. Thanks. So this patient um, is a male patient who has been operated seven times somewhere. And now he has come with bilateral, you know, rhinosporidosis. Both nose are full and little bit of it is hanging down in the nasopharynx. Rhinosporidosis, as we all know, is a notorious disease. Is good little. Notorious for its recurrences. This sporangi are the spores may germinate anywhere they come in contact and then can lead to again a same story. So the surgery also is very challenging in the sense when the sporangias are released, if any of them are germinating, can invade the mucosa or the bare surfaces wherever you have created. So it's always a challenge to deal with this situation. And secondly, in surgery, the ongoing bleeding is the biggest challenge. Because of the ongoing bleeding, sometimes you do not know where this tissue is attached to. Because it is the attachment that needs to be identified and completely coagulated at the base. That is what you can do in surgery. Secondly, it is not one attachment. It may have multiple attachments anywhere in the, you know, uh, nasal cavity. It may go behind to the oropharynx, nasopharynx, and, you know, it can be systemic as well. So this, the, this is something which is adding on to the challenges. The the microbe which is responsible is again a big mystery. Earlier it was considered to be a bacteria, then fungi, then parasite. Then now in recent studies it has been more in favor of a protozoa, aquatic protozoa, or so many other stories, you know, uh, shown. So it is still a mystery. A lot of things are not known. Medical treatment is still not developed to this. Only some adjuvant therapies which work, we all know. And one of them, the Dapsone is the someone, which is more, you know, reliable to a certain extent. Now I will show you a pellet retractor. Well, a tonsil retractor. Tonsil retractor, pellet retractor. Hello? Hello? Yes, sir. Okay. So yeah, yeah, we can hear you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so I, I have directly come to the 
सर्जिकल पार्ट लुकिंग एट द टाइम कॉन्स्टेंट तो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल आई विल शो यू हाउ वी कैन डील बेस्ट सर्जिकली दिस एंटिटी नंबर टू हाउ टू प्रिवेंट द डिसमिनेशन एंड नंबर टू हाउ टू बिगिन बिकॉज द मूवमेंट द ब्लीडिंग स्टार्ट दैन नथिंग इज विजिबल सो अवर टूल ऑफ चॉइस टू डील विद दिस सिचुएशन इज द कॉबलेटर कॉबलेटर maintaining the bloodless field yeah you are in love with the coagulator yeah this is very important in this surgery to maintain a bloodless field to maintain the visualization so that we can go on to the attachment secondly to prevent dissemination we have to have a pack in the nasopharynx number 2 we have to fill the entire cavity at the end of the surgery because some of the spores which might have released may have are in the germinating phase may invade the other areas and povidin iodine has been uh, proven to be effective against those germinating spores so we fill the entire cavity at the end of the surgery say 15 minutes or so with the povidin iodine okay. so this is what the majors we do and in recurrent cases we don't know the efficacy but we almost always give refer uh, this patient to our, either our immunologist or the dermatologist for the dapsol therapy okay What is the dose of Dapson and how long do we give it? Okay. We don't give Dapson for that matter. We don't give Dapson. Dapson has a lot of uh, you know adverse effects as well. Okay. So we refer to our colleagues and keep in touch with them. Okay. See, all first right. of all. This is the mass which is coming in the nasopharynx. Can you see? No, we, can, we don't have the picture. We don't have the picture. Please. Yeah, yeah, we have it now. Yes. इसको रेट्रा करें यहाँ से रेट्रा करें यहाँ से करना ठीक है करना सर या सी दिस मास इन द नेजोफेरिंग्स यस सर वी कैन सी दैट छोटा गोश्त पीस दिस इज नोटोरियस टू डिसिमिनेट एनीवेर वी हैव सीन Rhinosporidosis disseminated in the cut shorter than in the oral pharynx, nasal pharynx, even the tongue, laryngeal of pharynx, even the outside skin everywhere. So to prevent this, see this is the lesion which is hanging down. Can you see? Yes, sir. We can see that. This is something I want to put down. Come later. Listen, or more, or more. See this? Yeah. So I want to remove it under vision. Pani nii hai, suction nii. Suction. एक नई प्लेट मंगवा जस्ट अ मिनट ब्लेड कौन ला रहा है इसको बोल दिया तुमने यार लेके जाओ नहीं अरे <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
See, you have to slowly, slowly ablate, not going very fast. Yes. See what I want, this overhanging part, I need to remove for the reason. Hey, come on. And now give me a pack. What are they? This pack I want to keep to prevent the entire surgery to prevent dissemination down. See this? Yes, sir. We can see that. Hold it. Hold it. See this? Yes, sir. That was the goal of initial removal. Okay. From behind. Now we have MRI and everything, but nothing predicts the site of attachment in this because it is too vascular and so inflamed all the time. Like that. See this? Yes, we can see that. So vascular it is, inflamed it is. Try to go as bloodless as possible. That is the best way, I would say. And challenging as well. You wouldn't think of embolization or uh, cut I mean, uh, like, nothing works. Nothing works. Nothing works. Okay. But there is no single named vessel which you can embolize. Yes. It sir. takes attachment from many places, takes vascularity from many small, small vessels. Say this. Debride. Debride. Say this after decongestion. Yes, sir. See this? Very clear, sir. Karo, karo. Hmm. Section like you go extra. Section like one. Satish, you want to use debrider now? You are asking for it. See, if I use the debrider, the field will be so bloody. Okay. You will not be able to see what is happening there, where it is attached to, or you may end up traumatizing many mucosal surfaces. Okay. Coblator is not very fast a tool, but it's a good tool in the sense the visualization is maintained almost always, all the time. That is true, yes. See how slowly, slowly you can remove the tumor. And all the I hope the picture is good. Yeah, it's very clear here.
चलो आई एम गोइंग स्लो बट थिंग्स आर अंडर कंट्रोल आई नो वेयर द अटैचमेंट इज गोइंग टू बी That's a very very frustrating disease. Section block worker. Okay, this one. Got the next view. Hmm. See, we have reduced. Yes, it has reduced. And see, no attachment in the nasal cavity anywhere. See yeah, this? it is free. And we are not giving any further raw areas. Minimal. Kya hua? Yeah, Naresh. Pani, pani, pani. Section pani. Dekh kaise? You are getting near the attachment, Satish. Not seen yet. Not seen yet. See, at two places I have um, given little raw areas on the turbinate, but that is looking healthy. Slowly, slowly, never be in hurry. Let it go like this onto the attachment. Okay. So this is allowing us to visualize this cob later. Yes. With debrider, it would be full of blood. आगे रख सकते हैं सी क्वाइट अ बिट ऑफ द ट्यूमर वी हैव रिमूव बोल देना अनुपम को सतीश पोस्टीरियर पैक इज स्टिल देर नो हेलो यो पुट अ पैक इन द नेस ऑफ फैरिंग्स बिहाइंड दिस मास इज इट जस्ट अ मिनट ओके कहा रहते हैं यार आनंद एक जन छोड़ के जाने 
Hello, yes, you are asking something? Uh, uh, I think we have a pack behind this mask, isn't it? You already yes. put a pack. Behind, to prevent yes. uh, anything going behind. Yes. Suction lagana hai aap. No, this is not. वो खोलने का वो लेके आओ Slowly, slowly. Keep reducing the volume. Cut it, cut it. Keep reducing the volume. Yes, sir. Correct, correct. Satish, who's handling the second section for you? My assistant. Uh, he's doing a good job. Yeah, yeah. As the bleeding gets a little brisk, I think uh, the carburetor loses the original efficiency. It's a little slower. See, even the carburetor is not able to give 100% bloodless. But still, yeah. we are able to maintain the visualization. Yes, yes, yes. Now, pack for a while. One more thing. If you yeah, have a posterior pack, we can't use a deep rider because in the yeah, present... So, we have already pack. left a posterior pack. Yeah. Now, this is another pack. We'll leave for a while. Go to the opposite side. That's a good plan. See this? Massive. Yeah, and pump with it with her in air. So, Cardinal Bisky. Yeah. Right, just wait a minute, then we'll move on to the opposite side. Posteriorly, our pack is there. See that? Yes, sir. Yes. Oh, it will work. Satish, just a question. Yes, please. Uh, if you are using irrigation during these steps, the uh, oblator will it work uh, equally efficiently or it will lose its efficiency? No, it works well. No issues. Uh, so then, the suction of the oblator is good. Oh, yes. Uh, no, the suction on the carburetor in uh, the soft masses frequently gets blocked. Your assistant yeah, suction is more important. I think. So the carburetor suction should be the stronger one. Hello. Okay. Okay. Now coming to the opposite side. Okay. Okay. Sir, okay. This is all coming to the interior nares. There is hardly any smoke. Hardly any space for our instrumentation even. Yes. 
Satish, you have thought of uh, harmonic uh, for this purpose, harmonic scalpel. Harmonic, the introduction and the irrigation and so many issues. Okay. Coblator in itself is a complete with everything. Suction, oh. irrigation, ablation, coagulation. <laughs> okay. Harmonic has a better uh, hemostasis. But in your hands, Coblator is giving a wonderful uh, performance. This surgery is a slow surgery with a coblator. Okay. And another very important thing, there is no collateral damage to mucosa of the turbinate or the septum. Yes, keep so minimal. Careful. Yeah. I think if somebody else is doing, there will be a lot of injuries on the lateral wall and septum. In your case, yeah. you are just hitting the mass. Muscle it is. Satish, is it possible to show the external view to show how the assistants are handling? Yeah, we'll show you. Okay. Here's a, here's a purulent collection within it. Yes. Within the lesion. So oh, vascular it is, so hard. The reason is seven times operated, you know? Yes, sir. See, I am, I am within the lesion. It's almost getting loose. Somehow trying to debulk this. It's such a bad situation. There was hardly any space in the nasal cavity. Yes. So basically what you have done is debulked so that you can see the posterior part. Because of the repeated surgery, it will become very hard. The only way we have to prevent dissemination is the Povidon iodine. Yes, sir, I agree with you. And cauterize the base.
your idea of keeping povidone iodine for 15 minutes is uh, very good. What about post-operatively? Can we do douche with povidone iodine and things like that? Povidone iodine, yes. Yeah. Okay. It is in spite of see the situation. Certainly not an easy case, uh, Dr. Satish. It yeah, looked very situation is bad. It's such a massive one. See, wherever is raw area, you have to coagulate hard. Wherever is the contact we have given now? Yes. Hello? Yes, sir. We yes, have to sir. cauterize the raw yeah, areas. We have to coagulate hard. Though it will give more raw areas, but you are not left with any choice. Looks, looks like attached to the septum. Yeah. Septum and uh, floor, floor also. But here septum was definite one which I have taken. Is this septum? Yes. Yes, yes. yes. Beyond that block only you can do. Now this luminal part, we have removed one attachment from the septum. Bleeding is ongoing, so let's take a chance with the washcloth. The brighter also. See? That's not funny, right? Quick, quick. See the septum and the floor. Yes, sir, we can Hello? see. Yeah, we can yes. see that. Hello? Yeah, yeah. Sir, we can hear you. We can Hello. see the picture. Hello? Can you hear me? Yes, yes, we can hear you and we can see the picture clearly. Hello? 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 Sir, we can hear you. Oh. What I can see, that is the site of attachment. Okay. Hello? Yes, sir. Sir, 
so we can see you Hello? we can hear you yes we can hear yeah. you yeah yeah so what i am trying to show it was attached to the septum and the floor in the middle yes i remove that part with the micro divider quick yes see this septum and the floor which i have cobbled yes cobbled नहीं इसका सेक्शन काम करो रुको रुको You don't know with so much of oozing. The problem with the bleeding, see this? Yes. Actually, okay. It's so difficult to guess where it is coming from. The white base. Uh... Forceps to pakar ya, forceps. अनुपम को बुला लेना गुड राइट जल्दी दे आओ हेलो यस वी कैन हियर यू सर सी इट्स सच यार यहां बैठ जाना है यार तेरे को प्रॉब्लम क्या है See this mask? Yeah. I still... In spite of all means, difficult to know where it is coming from. Yeah. So this is another effort to yeah, go to the site of attachment. I can do it quickly with the debrider. Yeah, so... See, it has taken a luminal part. Yes, sir. Yes. And see some attachment onto the turbinate. See this? Yes, we can. So that was the attachment on the inferior turbinate. Okay. Looks like it has come. But Looks like that was the attachment on the inferior turbinate. Yes, sir. Let us see. What was? Section. Another section. Now I will go to opposite side. Yeah. Okay. Find out. Yeah. So the nasopharyngeal part was pulled from opposite side. See that? Yes. Very nice. Very nice. It looks good, and this is the pack behind. Okay. Can you see? Yeah, we can see that. There's nothing on this side. See? Okay. 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 That is the pack coming from other side. Wonderful. Give me the cobbler.
Satish, we want to have an outside camera view after this, how uh, they were able to get the instruments inside and so forth. Yeah, this is So, yes, sir. Looks like we are through. The only attachment was we have got is the posterior end of the turbinate. We'll see to it. Like this. Section. Look, give me. Right side is pretty clear. Yes, right side is not bad. Yeah, but what I'll do this area. On the basis of the doubt, I remove this. Yes. So it doesn't look like the mucosa looks thicker than the normal. Yes, that's for the only reason. Spinoethmoid recess, it shouldn't be so thick. See, rest is good. On Wonderful. this side is um terminate part which is bleeding. Look, section girl. Wash girl. Wash, wash. Achha karta hai. Bhar banai. Now coming to the left side. See this. Yes, sir. See the site of attachment onto the terminate. It was. Yes. We had earlier seen the floor. We have removed. Yes. Satish, a uh, yeah, bipolar, will it give the same efficiency as this? Not really. Not really. Okay. The tool should have all the capability to deal with the bleeding. Okay. Suction, irrigation, see? See the floor where it was attached to? Yes. To clear it up to the bone. I have no option but to remove it. Yes, it has to go right. Yes. See, inferior turbinate and vessel to the inferior turbinate. From the undersurface also. See this little venous oozing. 
That is the only way of choosing now. So they say. Patla they say. We'll calculate that. Rest of the thing, I have removed the part of the terminate. Yes, sir. No option but to go radical, boss. Follow. Touch. Touch. Oh, when he uses a diathermy, you're using monopolar, right? Yes. No. Monopolar gives a very good energy to the bleeding site. And if you want more energy, use a solid instrument like a no, no. all probe or a curate. Suction conveys around 50% of the energy only. So most of the, I think the lesion has gone. Only the terminal is giving a little trouble posterior. Hmm. That's the turbinate. Satish, at times when these kind of oozing comes from these bones, do you mind? Uh, uh, will you consider cutting the bones off? Cutting the bone? The bone that is uh, partly destroyed and ah, partly yeah, yeah. you can do a partial resection here but it's in stop with the monopolar yeah it will stop in no time this is hardly anything yes yes Almost stopped. Hmm. Look up later. See now, it has been stopped. Yes. Imagine such a frustrating disease. Bandha, bandha. For the audience, the black coating on the suction tip is insulated. So he is able to use the suction tip on the area of the uh, uh, There is something in Amazon called shrink tube. Just see what's the shrink tube. You have that, you can insulate many of your instruments, laryngeal, uh, even curates or ball probes. It makes a wonderful uh, insulation. Much better than the insulating tape because you can even autoclave after that. What is that called as? Shrink tube. That's how all your cell phone chargers are all insulated. The wires are pushed into this tube and they heat it and it shrinks. I use it for uh, instrument uh, insulation, uh, Satish, because uh, how much ever uh, cautery machine we use, a hollow instrument conveys part of the energy only. Sure. We need solid instrument to, especially maxillary crest. No, call, call call. Got your point. See now, that is our pack behind. That's all collected blood, no? On the pack, see below the pack, see that pack? Yes. Yeah. 
Is the pack behind? Yes. What are they? So now there is nothing, no more tumor behind. We have coagulated the floor, the part of the septum, the posterior end of the turbinate, partially removed also. See this? Very nice. No more lesion. I don't know very nice, but it's so frustrating. It makes you, you know. But that is what you can do. And the most important part is we have ample of access. These patients require a close follow-up. See, we have ample of access in the nasal cavity now for future. Yes. Everywhere, everywhere we have used the cautery or coagulator. The attachment was on the surface, but we have radically removed the inferior turbinate. See, radically removed the floor. See how radical I am here? Yes, sir. Radically removed the septal attachment. Yes. Basically, opposite side is ultra clear. Yes. And now we will <coughs> fill this entire cavity with the povidone iodine for minimum 15 minutes. Povidone iodine was proposed during COVID times also. After an exposure to a COVID positive patient, doctors can use it. I don't know how effective it was, but it was proposed because it's antiviral also. Yeah, it is broad spectrum. It works against. See now, this entire cavity because we have a pack behind and we are filling this cavity on both sides with the iodine solution. See this? Yes. yes sir. And post op iodine irrigation, and it works very well. You know, the basis is. There are two things, spores and sporangias. Those spores, we are not germinated, are never going to grow. Okay? Yes. Germinated spores can go onto the surface and create problems. Satish, 15 minutes of powder on iodine is actually sporicidal. It will uh, destroy the spores too. Yeah. So we'll keep it for 15 minutes. And it will take care of the germinating sporangias and then post op also irrigation with the betadine. And then, you know, close monitoring with telescope. Since it is a multiple revision, so we'll give depth one also by all these measures. Even if there is a smallest of the recurrence by early fall up, close fall up, you can pick up and remove easily. Because now we have good access in the nasal cavity. Right. So, follow-up is very important. If you get early, you can remove it radically. So, that is the only way you can prevent recurrences. And by the, all these means, these patients do well. It's not that you operate and forget about it. This is not that kind of a surgery. Or Or <laughs> Satish, it was a wonderful demonstration. Very nice. We are from an area of South India where I think rhinosporidium was once upon a time rampant with the number of people uh, taking bath in uh, columns have reduced. I think rhinosporidium also has reduced. I think uh, the only residual pocket is areas around uh, Kanyakumari in Tamil Nadu and a few pockets in uh, Kerala now. Uh, I still remember in the 90s when we used to large rhinosporidium without any of these uh, uh, tools, only with bipolar and uh, unipolar. Uh, Tulisdas and myself used to conduct these workshops. Uh, we used to do one side with the amount of blood that the patient uh, bled. You can't proceed. Pack it and go for the next side the next day. Now, you saw how he did. It was a wonderful uh, demonstration, Satish. Thank you. Any questions from the audience? Dr. Satish will be glad to answer.
nobody wants to do any study on the rhinosporidium if you want to get padma bhushan you can work out the life cycle you will definitely get a padma bhushan see but the old man did it some hundreds of years ago you can continue there sir one question please uh, sir, sir oh, please yes. comment on use of dapson because dr sadish was telling this is the fifth or sixth time we are using there is no scientific uh, our consensus regarding the use of do dapson its dosage yes. for how long we have to use right. second thing is uh, sir this use of uh, povidone iodine uh, how was what percentage or how long you have to give uh, is it nasal dosing or drops uh, please comment on that thank you yeah. so post operatively we continue dosing with povidone iodine very close follow up every 15 day until it completely heals and for next one year at least so that even the smallest of the recurrence you can identify endonasal and you can take care of that satish so they want to know the concentration they want to regarding know. the regarding the dapson as you commented that there is no concrete therapy for this you're right but the only thing which works maybe you know i don't know placebo or whatever but the only thing which has been known to work as an adjuvant to reduce the recurrences is dapson but dapson is a dangerous drug we never give on our own so send to your skin or immunologist and uh, let them monitor with that so well, it can cause g6pd deficiency or many other enzymatic reactions in the body so be careful but it has been shown i don't know like we give dimox to reduce the pressure whether it reduces or not nobody knows it's like that satish they wanted to know the concentration for post op use of povidone iodine how much dilution etc 0.5% 0.5% okay sir dapson there is one more drug rifamycin that was also proposed yes and also given up none of us have seen a case going away with dapson or rifamycin no, no, that is not the answer to the work. problem that is an adjuvant Now, after Adjuvant. surgery is what is the question yeah when you have nothing something is better than nothing like that so it's an adjuvant therapy if you have rhinos anybody has rhinosporidosis without surgery we give dapson dapson there is no use after complete clearance as an adjuvant therapy in the post op in recurrent cases is something indicated that's it i think here we are talking about Uh, the organism which is protozoal unknown yes. right now you know the states of tamil nadu and kerala are affected with kerala wilt which comes in coconut that's also protozoal no agriculture college is claiming any medicines just like this protozoal so we have lot of scope for research in this organism any bright minds you can always take it up Sir, is there any, sir, uh, you are using you separate nasal endoscope for these rhinosporidium procedures? You have to sterilize it. Everything what you have used, cobbler went through, uh, including nasal endoscope. Is it no endo endoscope? You can uh, sterilize. Yes, sir. Doctor, I think endoscope. How to sterilize is your question. You can yeah. autoclave. is the one which is used for these rhinosporidium procedures can it be used for other the one thing that you don't use is the endotracheal tube yes. it's thrown yeah. right because it cannot be always disposable it's all autoclavable always disposable oh sir thank you satish what do you do with the wand this uh, wand which you have used throw immediately throw right. the uh, the cobulator wand is removed and thrown Yes, sir. Yes. Cobulator, debrider, both. Any other questions? Satish, it was just a wonderful expression of your surgical skills and the way you used the tools which are available to everybody. But in your hands, it becomes like a magic wand, not a cobulator wand. I think I should appreciate. yeah you can hear the applause from the audience uh, so not everybody this cobulator can do like this he did really wonders uh, and uh, the assistants who helped you also did a great job 
I think we should congratulate them also. Thank you. Everybody should learn to handle it like this. That is the whole purpose of this exercise. Thank that you. So Thank kind you. enough to sit the whole day and demonstrate this. That means every one of you should be able to handle that. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for your uh, attention and big thanks to the organizing team for giving me this opportunity. Thank you so much. Respected Dr. Satish Jain, we request you to come on live. Uh, Dr. Sadish Jain, we request you to come on live. We would like to take this opportunity to thank you for your extensive virtual presence. It was indeed engaging and wholesome. On behalf of Kerala AOI Thrissur Chapter, KenCon 2022 Conference, we would like to honor you with the Kerala Memento and Certificate. On behalf of you, Kerala State President, Dr. Prabhagaran is receiving it and the scientific committee represented by Dr. Isan and Dr. Indudaran will deliver this memento, certificate and plaque personally to you at Jaipur. I would like to cordially invite on stage Dr. Arun Kumar, organizing chairman, KenCon 2022 and Dr. Ramesh, organizing secretary, KenCon 2022 to present the certificate, the memento and the plaque. Sir, on behalf of you, I am receiving it. We would also like to thank Dr. Mohammad Sharif PK, Senior ENT Specialist Astamims Cortical, for being representative of KenCon 2022 at Jaipur. I would also like to thank Dr. Shajid, AOI Secretary, for coordinating the live surgery. Sharif, just come in. On, oh, okay, thank you very much, Sharif. You have been very helpful to coordinate with the suggestion chair. So we'll see you tomorrow. We'll have your memento directly. Uh, uh, Dr. Satish, this is an ornament used for caprician elephants, especially in temple festivals. And Trishur is the place for temple festivals. They have uh, 20 to 40 elephants paraded on, on the day of Trishur Puram. So this is very emotional. This is very valuable thing for people of Trishur and Kerala. And this to be, we are giving it to you uh, to make us, make you one of us and appreciate all that you have done for us today and uh, throughout the, uh, your career and our careers also. Thank you so much. And uh, one more thing is being a giant in uh, ENT, this, guy, this ornament is given for the giant in the animal kingdom. So now we are giving it to the giant of ENT. That is Dr. Satish. Oh my God. Thank you so much for your all love and affection. Thank you once again, uh, the entire team ENT Kerala for uh, all this you have showered on me. Thank you so much. 
We would like to express a heartfelt gratitude to the esteemed chairs. I request Dr. Gopigumar, past AOI president and senior consultant, to present certificates to Dr. Anand and Dr. Idikula Matthew.